Senator Rebin Padilla. Morning, sir. Maganda umaga po. Uh, mahal na tagapangulo. Mabuhay po kayo. <laughs> Salamat po, Senator Robin. And, at saka gusto nating uh, kilalanin din po ang uh, presensya po ng ating dalawang kasamahan na nasa uh, present virtually po sa ating uh, Zoom uh, committee hearing. Senator Jingoy Estrada. Uh, Kalau <laughs> I'm not going Another application. Yung dapat ganon.
Para Uma Farmers, we have two representatives, J. Real in Enano and Jomar A. Fortes. For the Federation of Agricultural Students in Mindanao or FASMIN, we have Ms. Rhea Jane Listahan. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank, Thank you, you, Comsec David. Uh, gusto natin kilalani din ang presensya ng ating uh, isang napakasipag at napakagaling na kasamahan. Si Senator Amy Marcos, yan po ay pinuno ng so lang po ang pinuno ng apat na komite dito Click po sa ating sound. Uh, <laughs> siya, siya lang daw ang mga ka-chair ng ganun karami. Ay, na, pero na, okay na, 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 okay na. Uh, pwedeng makiusap po sa mga bisita online na patayin po sana muna yung kanilang monitor dahil naririnig po namin yung uh, background uh, background nila para sa maayos po na uh, proceedings. no So, uh, Wala na pong opening statement on my part as the chair dahil napakaraming bisita. So may agenda ho tayo. Yung una ay briefing po ng NYC or National Youth Commission. Pangalawa po yung uh, sponsorship and uh, hearing on the Young Farmers and Fisher Folk Challenge Act uh, authored by Senator Marcos, Senator Jingoy, and Senator Legarda. Yeah. At tapos pangatlo yung inquiry in aid of legislation on our resolution on youth unemployment and underemployment. Dahil marami po tayong bisita, I'll ask my colleagues, baka may unang panguna, pangunang statement po sila. Si Senator Robin po. Yeah. Uh, Chairman po ng Constitutional Amendments and Public Information po siya. Maraming salamat po. Mahal na taga-Pangulo. Pwede ko po bang uh, ipauna yung ating binibini? Ah, wala. <laughs> Kasi magsasalita siya mga medun sa bill niya. Ah, si Sunish <laughs> sponsor niya yung kanyang Young Farmers uh, Okay po, sa bill. kanyang pahintulot, uh, mahal na taga-Pangulo. Gusto ko lamang pong uh, iparating po sa inyo na ako po ay uh, nasasabik sa usapin na ito na patungkol sa kabataan sapagkat uh, totoo po ang sinabi ng ating uh, bayani na si Jose Rizal, ang pag-asa ng bayan ay nasa kabataan. At uh, kung ito po ang bibigyan ng sapat na panahon, sapat na atensyon, Naniniwala po ako na ang uh, ating inang bayang Pilipinas ay makakawala dito sa kahirapan, dito sa napakatagal na po nating dinadala na hindi po natin alam kung uh, bakit tayo parang uh, yung ating pag-usad ay hirap na hirap. Siguro po uh, pamamagitan po ng komite na ito ay malalaman po natin kung ano talaga ang pangangailangan at hinaing ng ating mga kabataan. Maraming salamat po, mahal na taga-Pangulo. Maraming salamat. Well said po. Ay, sumasangayon po ako sa sinabi ni Senator Robin and we'll tackle more of that uh, during the hearing. Uh, ngayon po, uh, bigay na po natin yung floor uh, sa pagsalita po ng ating Executive Director ng National Youth Commission para, I guess, uh, Executive Director Lea, you will present the state of uh, affairs, especially during the pandemic. Pakibanggit na rin po yun. Thank you. Uh, E.D. Lea Villalon of the NYC po. Maraming maraming salamat po sa uh, sa ating tagapangulo ng Kapulungan, Senator Sunny Angara. Um, binabati ko rin po ang ating mga kasamahan uh, dito sa ating meeting. Uh, Senator Robin Hood, si Padilla, uh, Senator Amy R. Marcos, um, Senator Jingoy Estrada, Senator Bong, Senator Legarita. Um, at sa lahat po ng opisyalis po na naririto, uh, isang mapagpalang hapon po sa ating lahat. Ako po si Lea Villalon, kasalukuliang Executive Director ng National Youth Commission. At uh, ngayong araw po ay magpipresenta po kami ng aming uh, backgrounder on, on our agency. Maliit lamang po ito, pero malaki po ang sakop. So, um, itatanong ko lang po yung aming PowerPoint. Ayan. Uh, sisimulan na po natin ang uh, National Youth Commission was created by virtue of Republic Act 8044 or the Youth in Nation Building Act of 1995. Its main purpose is to provide sound policies and programs 
for the development of youth, uh, Filipino youth aged 15 to 30, through the formulation of research initiatives and policy guidelines. So our section, sectoral vision is to enable involved and patriotic youth realizing their aspirations. Um, our organizational vision towards the end, uh, NYC envisions itself as a voice and advocate of the youth. Our mission uh, commits to achieve uh, to promote sustainable developmental policies and programs for and with the Filipino youth. And as a youth-centered agency, NYC shall advocate policies on youth protection and participation, build and sustain partnerships and networks, um, both locally and internationally, foster youth participation in community development and good governance. Uh, our goals... Um, are threefold. Uh, first, legislative and policy ad agenda strengthens the authority of the National Youth Commission on youth participation policy and as a prime mover in inclusive youth development. Second, a uh, youth development agenda is mainstream in national and local priorities and plans. Lastly, the Commission and its Secretariat have the capacity, skills, and expertise as duty bearers on inclusive youth participation and development. So, maliit lang po ang aming organization. We have the Commission proper. Uh, under the Commission proper, the chairperson. Uh, next is uh, yours truly, the Executive Director. Um, under my office is the, the Management Unit, Legal Unit, and the IT. And um, under uh, the the us are three um, uh, units: uh, Department of Finance, Policy Research, Regional Youth Development, Social Marketing, Planning and Monitoring, and Evaluation. So, yung priority policy agenda, namin may sham. So, una is. Uh, Strengthening child protection policies in the Philippines. Second, strengthening civic education in the K-12 to basic education. So later on, uh, we'll go through some of the main uh, issues ng bawat policy agenda namin. Third is the addressing discrimination in educational institutions focused on the LGBTQ community, indigenous youth, and pregnancy among teen students. Fourth, the need for a Magna Carta for OSY or out-of-school youths. Fifth, our mandatory ROTC for tertiary education students. Um, sixth, our youth involvement in DRRM. Seventh, teenage pregnancy. Eighth is the youth in climate action. And lastly, of course, uh, the RA 8044, strengthening youth development in our country. So uh, next slide, please. So, una-una, yung strengthening child protection policies in the Philippines. Um, we'd like to highlight the main issues, no? So, despite having comprehensive laws and guidelines regarding child protection, there is uh, still a lack of guidelines specifically in cases related to children with disabilities. Although cases similar to these were considered isolated, there is zero to no mention of these provisions. Um, second, our issue uh, is a detailed comprehensive guidelines or law on the sanctions to repeat offenders were mentioned by the existing policies. However, during the time of the pandemic, such policies are not applicable to address the current situation. There was a rapid increase in abuses, especially at home, during the time of the pandemic um, has been observed. So lack of reporting mechanisms due to the working arrangements followed by most of the agencies has been identified as one of the factors that contributed to the increase. Also, the local level implementation and funding should also be, uh, should be also given utmost importance since they are considered the front lines of the community. 
Um, so there is a lack of NYC established guidelines that address the vulnerabilities of child youth sector or those age 15 to 17 years old, uh, especially in the different programs, projects, and events conducted by NYC, as well as in policy advocacies. So, ang, uh, kung mamarapatin po ang uh, legislative agenda is the codification of existing policies on child protection. Uh, second, uh, on our policies, strengthening civic education in the K-12 to basic education curriculum. So the center of participation here is education, sir. Um, our main issue, so the curriculum framework is presented through the spiral progression of learning concepts and competencies where the lessons are horizontally and vertically articulated. Therefore, the lessons have been placed in a way that every grade level will have a correlation and continuity when tackled as the learner grows and their awareness widens. So civic education, or at least part of its basic context, is spread all through K to 10. And some of it can still be found in grade 11 curriculum. These are the main learning areas that cover it. First, araling parinipunan, education, uh, education sa pag pagpapakatao, education, pantahanan at pangkabuhayan, understanding culture, society, and politics uh, sa grade 11, and disaster readiness and risk reduction sa grade 11 also. The majority of civic education lessons are not labeled as such, thereby posing a challenge to research and studies, but still can be inferred by the subject matter and societal vi values to topic wishes to impart. Additionally, the National Youth Assessment Study in 2021 also shows the youth's perception that they have a relatively low level of skill and competencies with regard to history. So, ang legislative agenda here is the uh, strengthen K-12 to curriculum. Uh, our third uh, policy, uh, addressing uh, discrimination in educational institutions under uh, focusing on the LGBTQ plus community, indigenous youth, and pregnancy among teen students. The center of participation is under education and OSY. Um, in LGBTQ uh, discrimination in schools at present, there is no national law that protects the members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer, plus community against evident discrimination. Yet, several anti-discrimination ordinances have been enacted, further manifesting the increasing support of the passage of the anti-discrimination bill. Um, Sa indigenous peoples and the right to education, despite existing laws and policies, IPs are considered to have been subject to historical discrimination and marginalization from political processes and economic benefit. Further, a number of indigenous groups in the Philippines have high rates of unemployment and illiteracy, among others. Um, Teenage pregnancy as a cause of school dropout. In 2012, the National Youth Commission made a statement addressed to the educational institution, reminding them that a school does not have the authority to strip a student of her rights because she got pregnant. Students have equal rights, pregnant or not. So until today, there are universities um, that still... Um, have these policies. Uh, teenage pregnancy is one of the major reasons for student dropout rates, thereby exposing the girls from further social vulnerabilities as education is one of the major needs for development. The legislative agenda is anti-discrimination and IP schools as safe spaces for students. Uh, Pang-apat po, uh, the need for a Magna Carta for OSY. So under the particip uh, center of participation here is the out-of-school youth. So data shows that as of October 2021, 
1.76 million youth were not in employment, education, or training. This comes off from the October 2020 data wherein 2.82 million youth were um, NEET, N-E-E-T. Reasons for not attending schools are mainly due to employment, which is 22.2%. Marriage, 15%. Have finished schooling, 14.6%. High cost of education, 11.9%. And finally, because of the COVID-19 pandemic is 9%. 0.6%. With this uh, grave scenario, uh, is the reality that once education is key to entering the economy in a more productive and advantageous way. Uh, fifth, out of nine, uh, the mandatory ROTC for tertiary education students. Ang Center for Participation dito ay ang Peace Building and Security. Um, the Reserve Officers Training Corps, or the ROTC in the Philippines, aims to provide military education and training for tertiary-level students to mobilize them for national defense preparedness. It is supposed to provide an excellent opportunity to instill national pride among students as well as provide intensive character formation. The NYC recommends the restoration of the mandatory ROTC and urges Congress to pass a legislative measure that will establish a comprehensive framework for training and mobilization of youth by providing avenues for their participation in public and civic affairs primarily through mandatory ROTC. Um, anim po, youth involvement in DRRM. Uh, still under peace building and security. The Philippines is known as one of the most disaster prone countries in the world. In the World Disaster Report 2012, we are ranked third after Tonga and Vanuatu. Um, natu natural disasters such as typhoons and earthquakes have resulted to loss of lives, health problems property damage, and social and economic disruptions from 2012, uh, 2000 to 2012. The youth must also be treated as potential partners in DRR. Youth organizations across the country conduct series of safety-related activities, which include swimming lessons, disaster preparedness, and open water safety training, and are likewise involved in response and recovery. So including the Filipino youth in, in the DRR processes shall prove their safety from disasters, making them source of action-oriented risk reduction activities and coping cap capacities. So our legislative agenda under youth involvement in DRRM is um, of course, involvement of NYC in NDRRMC and inclusion of DRRM in basic education curriculum. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Wala yes, pang provision ED dun sa NDREAM bill uh, regarding participation ng youth? Sa so, Yung bill creating the NDREAM council? Oh, wala bang, wala? Wala. Pero we should look at that. No? Sige, go ahead, go ahead. Um, pang pito, out of nine, so malapit na. <laughs> Teenage pregnancy. So under uh, the center of participation here is the health. So the National Youth Commission advances the removal of required prior parental consent between 15 to 17 years of age in accessing reproductive health services. This amendment of Section 7 of RA 10354 is essential in providing wider access to RH services for all youth age groups and is specifically designed to remove, minimize, or minimize significant hindrances in the full implementation of RH law. So RH concerns produce numerous and various emotional responses to each member of the family. The utilization of local social welfare workers diminished the emotion of decision-making among the family, thus making a more rational approach in addressing RH concerns. 
Pangawalo po, ang Youth in Climate Action. So, ang center of participation is environment. So, disasters and calamities contribute to the cycle of poverty. It prevent communities, families, and individuals to realize their capabilities and potentials. Because of climate change, more severe and frequent calamities will continue to hit our land. Hence, communities need to strengthen their mechanisms and cap capacities to prevent, adapt, or mitigate, and prepare for the impact of disasters. So young people should be educated on climate change adaptation to develop their capacities in making the necessary interventions to mitigate its effects. So they should also be included in preparation and planning out how they can to address these vulnerabilities themselves. So lastly, strengthening youth development in our country. So it is under governance, no? Uh, with two decades of existence, NYC has provided significant support to national policies and implemented various programs and projects in lieu of youth participation and development. NYC has also mobilized and generated resources and strengthened strate strategic alliances, advocacies, and partnership with various sectors for the implementation of youth programs and projects through a generally participatory approach. In line with policy formulation is the need for policy advocacy. It can be inferred that NYC's policy formulation function has not been maximized due to its heavy focus on the implementation of its mandate and flagship projects. The midterm assessment report on NYC from 2011 to 2016 agency plan reports that unless policies are supported, enacted, and widely disseminated and monitored for enforcement, the policy formulation tasks and the efforts that go with it will not produce the, the desired results for the youth. It is, here, it is hereby proposed that the institutional reforms be formulated in order to address the current challenges faced by the institutions, as well as to reinforce NYC's trust towards being the sole policy formulating and coordinating body for the youth. So lo lastly, local youth development offices and local youth development councils have expressed their concerns on the lack of support given them vis-a-vis -vis their expected outputs. RA 10742 and RO 11768 stipulated various responsibilities for the two local bod youth bodies, yet it lacked enough support and strong institution to ensure that these bodies can actually perform their duties. Um, um, I'll just go through with our priority programs and projects of NYC. Uh, unang una yung Philippine Youth Development Plan for 2023 to 2028. We also have the National Youth Assessment Study. Uh, NYC spearheads the crafting of the National Youth Assessment Study, or the ENIAS, which is a national comprehensive study on the youth's current behaviors, values, and attitudes. We also have a program on the National Youth Parliament, usually this these are the three-day convention of the youth leaders every two years. Yan. Uh, next is the Sangguniang Kabataan Reform Act of 2015. Uh, it's a landmark legislation for youth policy and affairs, which underscores major reforms for the operation of the SKs. Um, next, participation of the youth in international programs. So, ang NYC po ang nag -a administer ng youth exchange programs. Um, to add to this, ka, under po sa NYC ang YORP, ang Youth Organizations Registration Program, ang NYC Mental, youth, uh, uh, Mental Health Youth Hub, and um, ayun po. So update on rec uh, recently enacted laws. So we have the RA11768, Strengthening the Sangguniang Kabataan Reform Act of 2015. RA11910, the summer youth camps, 
and the RA11913, the National Youth Day. So, uh, that ends our presentation po. Um, Thank maraming you. maraming salamat po. Salamat din, uh, Executive Director. Very comprehensive. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yes, yes, uh, Senator Marcos, please. Single question lang. Ano? Sa dinami ng binanggit mong programa mula sa Child Protection, LGBTQ, ROTC, and the RRMC, at kung ano-ano pa, hindi ninyo binanggit yung kaisa-isang mandato ninyo na kayo ang dapat uh, mag-perform ng secretarial duties at support para sa SK. Bakit wala sa listahan? Kasi marami po nagsasabi na sa right sizing, dapat mawala na ang NYC. Dahil may SK naman. So, ang tinatanong ko, anong relasyon ninyo, ano ang ugnayan, ano ang kooperasyon, ano ang papel ninyo sa SK? Ang papel po namin is the, um, sa ilalim po ng National Youth Commission, ang sangguni ang kabataan, ang training po ng sangguni ang kabataan. So, uh, kasama po sa priority agenda namin, number nine, strengthening youth development in the country, uh, RA 8044 po. Oo, alam ko yun. Kaya lang, dati-rati, uh, gawain niya ng DILG dahil may barangay affairs, meron ring SK affairs. Apa. Kung bakit nagkaroon pa ng NYC, dapat iba naman yung papel ninyong ginagampanan para hindi patong-patong, paulit-ulit at redundant. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair, kasi naghanap tayo ng pera. <laughs> Sir, ma'am. Thank you. We'd like to acknowledge our majority leader who's Thank present you. online. Dating uh, pinuno nitong komite uh, at maraming pinasang batas para sa kabataan tulad nung uh, first-time job seekers, yung mga doktor para sa bayan, among many others, no? ang ating kaibigan, ang ating majority leader, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva. Sir, go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Again, uh, we congratulate you for calling this hearing. I think this is very important, especially when you talk about the uh, uh, concerning uh, figures as to uh, youth unemployment, underemployment, etc. But uh, my uh, my question would 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 stem from uh, what Senator Imi was uh, 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 raising a while ago: the importance of uh, NYC's role in uh, in uh, uh, in the uh, development of our young people's uh, ability to lead no and uh, talk about sk for example um, at present there are about 42000 uh, uh, 46 barangays and uh, uh, i i just wanted to to find out no yung 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 uh, relevance and uh, uh, stemming from uh, what Senator Aimi was talking about, we, we wanted to find out the relevance of uh, NYC vis-a-vis -vis the uh, uh, role being given to uh, this uh, particular agency. For example, as I mentioned, uh, 42,046 barangays, how many barangays have no SK uh, officials, um, whether SK chairperson or uh, members? Because uh, in the previous uh, hearings in... Uh, uh, committee on uh, Electoral Reforms, Committee on uh, Local Government. Um, nabanggit po ito, Mr. Chairman, eh, no? na may mga SK uh, positions na bakante hanggang ngayon. And uh, yung impact nito, alam natin, kung uh, uh, hindi sila kompleto, absent yung uh, SK chair or officials, uh, in terms of uh, implementing programs for our young people, and in harnessing the uh, uh, potential of the youth in uh, nation building, ma affect ito. So we wanted to find out, no? So again, uh, going back to my question, one, relevance, and two, ito, uh, nakikita ba nila ito at uh, ano yung ginagawa nila tungkol dito? Thank you. Uh, please, uh, we'll ask uh, ED. Uh, marami, maraming salamat po. Um, to answer po the queries, ang... Um, Ang mandato po ng National Youth Commission, we have a provision on mandatory and continuing training program for all SKs and officials. So lahat po ng ating sangguniang kabataan ay tinitraining po ng National Youth Commission. Doon po na pupunta ang budget po natin. Um, Siyempre, kasama din 
dun sa agenda natin, priority agenda, yung re re revitalization of the structure ng NYC to further strengthen the agency's role in implementing the SK laws. So, kumbaga, um, in terms of monitoring din po sa lahat po ng ginagawa ng ating sangguniang kabataan, kasama din po yun sa role ng NYC. So, yun po, um, sir. Salamat. Siguro, uh, again, yung, yung, yung uh, uh, latter part of my question is the uh, uh, challenging uh, 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 situation that we are in because uh, in the last hearing, I remember they were saying, I think yung lente po yata, yan, if I'm not mistaken, that there are about 34,000 34, vacant SK positions as of, uh, I think, 2018 ito. No? I, I don't know. I, that's why I wanted to find out the, the figures if you are indeed monitoring, as you made mention a while ago. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are about 420,000 uh, SK positions kasi sampung position per barangay, uh, 42,000. So... Uh, that's 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 how I I, I got the, the figure. So if that is the case, malaking problema ito, no? Uh, very challenging ito. And uh, sabi nyo nga, you're supposed to be monitoring this. So what are we uh, doing right now uh, to address this uh, situation? Are you also calling for uh, for uh, uh, the uh, the uh, 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 tawag dito pag 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 conduct ng election dito sa darating na December? Uh, Mr. Chair, dadagdag lang ako yeah, diyan yeah. kay Ms. Dorothy. Go ahead, go ahead, Sen. Kasi nung nag-file uh, ng mga amendments, nung nakaraang kongreso uh, tungkol sa SK, ang sinasuggest namin i-abolish na yung federation kasi tama po si majority na halos walang mahanap na mga uh, kandidato sa maliliit na barangay. This has to do with the first anti-dynastic provision in any law in the Philippines. Because if it's the third degree of consanguinity or affinity in a barangay of 200 people, eh lahat naman magkakamag-anak. So on one hand, nadi-disqualify lahat. Or on the other hand, pinepervert naman yung ating batas. Uh, atras o magre-resign yung tatay na barangay kapitan, tatakbo yung nanay, tatakbo yung SK. Eh parang lokohan naman to. No? Alam naman natin kung sino Yun. So, ang uh, sinasuggest ko na i-amend na lang yung SK law, tanggalin na itong 422,000 million na hindi naman umaapir at uh, gawin na lang natin isang kinatawan sa bawat konseho, barangay council, isang kagawad uh, sa munisipyo, isa rin, isang uh, kagawad, tapos doon sa provincial level, isang board member at sana sa national may youth din, tignan natin dati ganun kasi. Uh, pero ang akin, yung uh, pagtatatag uh, ng buong federation, very unworkable, katulad ni sinabi ni uh, Apo Joel. Point, uh, Senator Aimee. Let's look into that uh, committee. Si Senator Robin yata may gustong idagdag. Uh, uh, alam niyo po, ma mahal na tagapangulo, noong unang panahon ni Amina Rasul, ma Masyado ako na-expose dyan eh, kasi ano yan eh, isa panahon yon na para sa akin eh, nararamdaman ko yung national. Magkakampi tayo mong me. Tapos muli kong naramdaman ang NYC. Noong uh, nagkaroon ng debate sa, sa TV, si Kadema tsaka yung isang uh, pakabayan black. Napakaganda nun kasi uh, alam naman natin wag tayo magbulahan uh, dito na lumalakas ang uh, uh, impluensya ng uh, mga aktivista. Ano? Ang tanong ko uh, sa inyo Hindi ba dapat mag-concentrate din kayo sa ganong klasing uh, pagpapalaganap sa mga malalayong lugar? Kasi pagka ako wala naman akong ano sa mga aktiviste. Okay lang 'yan. Huwag ka lang humawak ng armas. Doon tayo magkakatalo. Pero doon sa usapin ng balansihin, hindi ba kayo dapat makipag-coordinate sa SK diyan? 
Meron ba kayong coordination ng SK? Apo, meron po. Uh, okay, pero sa mga datos na nakukuha ko, uh, maraming kabataan ang naiimpluwensyahan ng... Uh, mabuti sana kung pagiging aktivista lang. Eh. Napupunta sila sa... Actually, ba English yun. Ha? Sa totoo lang, may ginawa pa akong uh, uh, pelikula patungkol sa... Ang title ng pelikula ay eh, Memoirs of a Teenage uh, Rebel. Ano? Mapakaraming kabataan ang napupunta sa armadong pakikibaka. Ang concern ko lang, sana ma ma mapalawak ninyo yung ganong kalasing mga talakayan na naipapaliwanag ng uh, National Youth Commission kung ano ang stand ng gobyerno. Kasi sa totoo, ma'am, nung ako, nung wala pa ako sa gobyerno, ang dami kong hinaing laban sa gobyerno. Ngayon, na nasa gobyerno ko, nakita ko ang daming programa ng gobyernong napakagaganda. Hindi nakakarating hindi natatransmit ng tama. Eh, walang pinakamaganda kundi National Youth Commission sana ang mag-transmit nun. Sana may coordina close coordination sana kayo sa SK. Kasi ako naman, wala naman akong laban sa SK. Yun lang sa mas nagiging politisan sila sa paningin ko kesa mas nagiging public servant. Yun lang po. Mr. Chairman, yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead, Majority Leader. Yes. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have a pending question. I. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, sorry. Pasensya na po. Pasensya na po, Major. Of course, oh. of course I, uh, I also would like to put on record the, uh, the same observation as uh, made mention by our uh, distinguished colleague from uh, Camarines Norte. No? Uh, it's important na the programs of the government will be relayed to our young people as you made mention earlier, we have passed so many laws that would uh, really uh, help our uh, young people not only to develop their leadership skills, but also for them, especially to be employed. No? Again, uh, this is going back to my previous question, Mr. Chairman. Dun sa SK, Mr. Chairman, no? uh, gusto ko lang i uh, marinig from NYC, no? yung... Uh, uh, kanina, binabanggit ni Senator Padilla, Senator Aimee, no, may, may mga vacancies. Eh. So how do we ad address this uh, situation? Do you have any suggestions? Narinig natin yung uh, napaka-interesting na uh, sinasuggest ni uh, Senator Aimee tungkol dito sa pagribisa o pag-amienda ng ating uh, SK law. Uh, Siyempre gusto naming marinig from uh, NYC ano yung uh, observations nila, ano yung mga ginawa nila at uh, ano yung mga pupwede naming matutunan dito sa mga uh, pag-aaral na inyong ginawa na as policy makers magamit namin dito sa Senado. Maraming okay. salamat ulit. Okay. Tama po, tama po Majority Leader. So just to please repeat the question of the Majority Leader, yung question niya regarding what are we going to do regarding all of these vacancies. Tapos yung Yung point naman ni Senator Aimee, you can if you can respond to that also, yung baka it's better to streamline going forward. Tapos yung point naman ni Senator Robin, yung regarding activism, yung student activist, and maybe is there a way to channel that para maging ano naman, uh, productive or hindi anti-government ang sentiment ng ibang kabataan. So we'll give you a chance, uh, Edie. Go ahead. Ayan. Uh, maraming salamat po. Uh, unang katanungan tungkol sa mga vacant positions. So kasama po sa ginagawa po ng uh, opisina po ng executive director is we reply to the uh, local government units pagka may katanungan sila regarding the, these vacant positions. Just to give you an idea, um, for example, pagka nag ng SK chairman, at nag-resign ang kanyang uh, vice chairman, sino po ang papalit? So, ang sumasagot sa mga ganitong katanungan is uh, nagbibigay po ang NYC ng, uh, ng reply kung ano ba yung nangyayari if in case uh, these things happen dun sa kanilang uh, local government units. So, pangalawa yung sa streamlining. Uh, Mr. Po, Chairman, sorry, sorry, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I, I, I'm, I'm, go ahead, Major. I, I, I will not belabor the uh, question uh, that I raised. I will just ask probably for a report as to how many. Because uh, I, as a follow-up question, I would be asking, is it true that there are 34,000 
vacant positions. Yung vacant positions. Yeah. So can we oh, get the yeah. actual numbers? Oh. Yes. And, Kung uh, okay sa'yo, Majo, pasubmit natin. Oh, kasi pasubmit baka, na lang para hindi. Pag uh, ngayon sumagot, baka hindi eksakto yung numero. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Malaman din natin uh, ano yung suggestion nila no? para yeah. tungkol dito at yung position na rin nila para sa darating na halalan. Yeah. Uh, may mga panawagan din para ipos. Tama po. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman. Salamat po. Salamat ng marami, Majority Leader. So, maybe you can give your position muna dun sa postponement. Tapos, regarding tulad ng sinabi ni Majority Leader, yung sa vacancies, can we ask for the exact number na lang muna as of uh, today or uh, recent recent date? Oh, go ahead, uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, paumanhin po. Wala po kasi kami dalang dato. No problem. Dun no sa problem. vacant positions. No problem. Thank you. Apo. We'll submit na lang din po. Apo. So, sa streamlining po nung uh, ating sangguniang kabataan, um, we look into it uh, kasama po ang ating uh, undersecretary and the commissioners. And, uh, Kasi yung point yata ni Senator Aimee is, eh, kung hindi naman nafe-fill yung position, why is it the position there, di ba? Parang ganon. Parang, eh, baka, di ba? Parang pointless din, eh, di ba? So, ano yung positive direction or Ano yung positibong dapat gawin natin going forward regarding these positions? Di ba? Baka tama. Kasi yung direction naman ng government is to streamline eh. Di ba? So, uh, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. All right. And dun sa pangatlo, dun sa activism, syempre, uh, naniniwala po kami na uh, nagsisimula dyan sa training ng ating sangguniang kabataan dahil sila po yung uh, may hawak ng kabataan ng kanilang uh, community. So, pagka nakakaskate po natin ang mga ginagawa ng ating national government dun sa ating mga leaders, uh, youth leaders, uh, doon po nila uh, may maganda silang um, uh, presentation dun sa kanilang mga kabataan dun sa lugar nila. Ako quick uh, rejoinder lang ha. Ibibida ko lang yung ibibida ko lang yung personal experience kasi nung governor ako nasa Cordillera ang Ilocos Norte. Ang ginawa namin kasi naniniwala ako na yung footprint ng kahirapan ay sharing footprint ng terorismo. So, habulin mo kung saan yung pinakamahihirap nung umpisa yung fisher folk. Kaya yung mga kabataan, kahit pa paano, doon kami nagre-recruit ng mga SK sa fisher communities. Tapos, nung bumulusok na yung tourism, hindi terrorism, kundi tourism doon sa Ilocos, nagbago yung poverty profile ng probinsya, yung mga recruit ng NPA, halos lahat, or 64% ayon sa NSC, EIP. Nung naging, nung naging indigenous people ang karamihan ng recruit, doon naman kami humabol ng SK at yung mga youth and livelihood activities, tinutok namin sa mga tribal areas sa upland remote. So, yun lang yung personal experience ko. That's one way of doing it. Ama, very good, very good. No? Uh... Uh, before I turn it over to Senator Robin, yung sinabi lang niya, let's take note na pang siguro maybe the the NYC can develop some special targeted programs for the poorest provinces dahil tama yung sinabi ni Senaimi. Senator Robin, opo. Uh, dalawang tanong lang po, uh, mahal na taga-Pangulo. Una, follow up lang po ito. Una, uh, sino po sino po ang mas may ano sa inyo? Parang uh, pinuno. Kayo po ba sa NYC o SK? Sino po ang mas mataas ang ranggo baga? Sino po ang pwedeng magutos? Sila o si kayo? NYC po. Ayun, napakaganda po ng inyong sinabi, ma'am. Kasi bago po natin sana, ang ganda po ng example ng ating uh, magandang ginang, ang akin po kasing mungkahi, bago natin pag-usapan ang pagiging leader, kailangan sanayin muna natin ng ating kabataan na maging magaling na follower. Hindi pwedeng puro leader. Kailangan may tagasunod. Mahirap yun. Opo, kaya sana po ang uh, pagtuunan natin ng pansin ay eh, itong ating SK ay maging very good follower. Maging tagasunod po ninyo. Hindi po pwedeng, uh, kung kayo po ang pinuno, hindi ba po, kayo po ang pinuno, sana matrain nyo sila. Hindi po kasi po pwede na talagang masyadong maraming magaling. Kapag masyadong maraming magaling, eh wala na po, wala pong mangyayari. Marami pong salamat. Salamat, Senator Robin. Any response from uh, Idilea? Hindi na, noted na lang. <laughs> noted po, Senator. <laughs> yeah, just regarding the 
issue of vacancies. My staff pointed my attention, the COMSEC, that sa uh, newly passed amendments to the SK Reform Act, yung 1168RA, um, pag yung vacancies due to other than the refusal to assume office, failure to qualify, voluntary resignation, death, permanent capacity, pwede mag-appoint yung mayor pala nung taon na yon na OIC from a list of three nominees as submitted by SK members. So just to, maybe that might help, baka makatulong yan sa, sa inyo to fill up the vacancies. No? Yes, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. And thank you for that information, Mr. Chairman. And if I may, I think it is important to note that uh, even if that is the case, and uh, for example, a mayor fails to, uh, uh, to uh, recommend. So, napipilay yung uh, sanggunian no? at uh, may mga resolutions na kailangan silang ipasa na hindi nila magawa. So, I think uh, it's a uh, valid concern and I think uh, we really need to look into this, uh, especially if we are to reform the uh, the uh, SK uh, law or uh, do some uh, modifications. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Salamat. Salamat po, Majority Leader. Uh, any response? Uh, if not, we can... Uh, I'd also like to place on record yung... I, I raised something on the End Dream Law a while ago, Republic Act 10 121. Meron palang Section 14 yon, we were reminded. Na it's, this is regarding the integration of disaster risk reduction education into the school curricula. So uh, our DEP Ed officials can take note. And the SK program and mandatory training for the public sector employees. Dito nga, the NYC is among many agencies DEP Ed, CHED, TESDA. OCD, DOST, DNR, DILG, DOH, DSWD shall integrate disaster risk reduction and management education in the school curricula of secondary and tertiary level of education, including the NSTP, National Service Training Program, including formal and informal technical vocational indigenous learning and out-of-school youth courses and programs. And SK councils shall encourage the community, especially the youth, participation in disaster risk reduction and management activities. Just just as a, as a footnote, uh, Your Honours. So, would the DepEd officials present care to respond uh, in general to anything that's been spoken about before we tackle the bill of uh, Senator Jaime, the young farmers? Yeah, uh, Asik Galban, please. Thank you very much, Senator Sonny Angara. Uh, once again, I'm Dr. Dexter Galban, representing the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Youth Affairs and Special Concerns. Before I proceed with our response, I'd like to first introduce our office. This is a recently developed office under the Department of Education that hopes to consolidate any and all youth-related programs being championed by the department and as well as serve as the liaison for any and all immediate and urgent concerns deemed important by the department. And with that being said, just very quick points as raised a while ago. First, on the notion of SK vacancies, we do recognize that that is a problem. We were invited by the National Youth Commission to comment on the implementing rules and regulations of the SK law. And with that being said, we strongly recommended that we look at the currently existing law, particularly AT, um, yes, um, I believe that is 8044, that focuses on the National Youth Advisory Council, of which the House and the Senate committees will have representation as part of that council, allowing us to serve as oversight committee for the engagements of the National Youth Commission, particularly when it comes to the SK. I think that would be a strategic move, uh, move uh, going forward. And with that being said, fortunately, the Department of Education chairs that council, and Vice President Sarah Duterte wants to amplify that as well. Um, on the notion of government programs, um, hopefully being championed by the NYC, the Department of Education is actually going to be assisting them in making that happen, more so that a lot of the programs of the government geared towards basic and secondary education are currently being rolled out from anti-drug abuse prevention and education, amongst others, as well as our national greening program, which we'll hopefully be able to tackle later, will be addressed and I believe that would be a good platform to ensure that from the get-go, elementary at high school pa lang, sir, we would be able to guarantee that 
students are aware of what government programs exist. And maybe we can provide assistance to NYC when it comes to that matter. On the last notion that was raised by our Honorable uh, um, Senator Padilla on anti-radicalization, um, that is something that our office is currently looking forward to assisting NYC with, more so that we are strongly championing the return of the mandatory ROTC, or at least its uh, modified version that expands the training programs beyond just military training, but more on holistic development. At kung matatamaan na po nito ang ating SK, perhaps that would be a good bridge to ensure that the learning programs from DepEd can be cascaded as well to our partners in NYC. Thank you, Asik, uh, Dr. Galban. Uh, any other Chairman. comments? If not, uh, we can... Yeah, yeah, go, on. go ahead, Majority Leader. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, and uh, with the indulgence of my two colleagues, Senator Padilla and Senator Aimee Marcos, uh, I would just like to uh, uh, make one last uh, 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 hurrah, Mr. Chairman, with, yes, regard please. Yes, to, please. <laughs> with regard to what you mentioned a while ago, and we are... Uh, uh, very much uh, interested with the uh, updates of our uh, law that uh, i mean one of the uh, accomplishments of this committee is the passage of the uh, first time job seekers act no which is a very very important law very helpful to our young people i don't know if we have uh, friends from uh, the department of labor and employment i'm sure there's uh, uh, Tesla is represented here and Chad is represented here and we talk about uh, the the the, the uh, uh, concern on uh, uh, youth unemployment and this particular law would be able to to help our young people, especially our uh, fresh graduates, whether you are from uh, 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 CHED or TESLA. We wanted to find out lang, Mr. Chairman, as to uh, the update on the implementation of uh, this law. If there's anyone out there who can help us and give us the latest Yeah, we have, uh, latest, Your Honor, we have figure. a Mr. We have Chairman. a dolly representative, Mr. Jerome Lucas, online. Uh, are, are you online? Are you with us, uh, Mr. Lucas? Uh, if you are, kindly open your screen, sir. Mr. Lucas from Dole. Uh, from Tesda, we also have E.D. Bungalen. Uh, speak clearly, please. Okay. What? <laughs> Edi Bunganon from Tesla is also with us. So either uh, she or uh, she or uh, Mr. Lucas from Dole could please uh, answer the question of our majority leader. Just to uh, repeat long, Mr. Chairman, no, update and at the same time challenges, update and challenges that they are facing because we have been monitoring this uh, particular law and uh, there are issues that uh, have come My up. For example, Mr. Chairman, in Section 4 of this law, libre naman po talaga lahat, no? Claro, for example, yung barangay clearance. We have been receiving some barangay officials are asking for 100 pesos fee, which is uh, ridiculous. Dahil libre po ito, napaka-claro doon sa bata. So, ilan to yung sa mga challenges and uh, gusto natin marinig lang kung ano yung mga gawa natin para matulungan pa natin yung implementing agencies nito. Salamat po, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, so... Uh, any of the persons we asked for? Ito si Do, Taga Dole. Uh, Ms. The name I can't see. Is that him? His screen doesn't say Jerome Lucas. Ano nakalagay na sa screen niya? Yeah, Mr. Lucas, ikaw ho ba yan? Yes po. Um, good afternoon po. I'm Senator. Thank yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Lucas. Oh, please, narinig ko ba yung tanong ni Zen Joel, ni Majority Leader? This is about this is the about implementation the of the... Um, First time job seekers assistance. Yes, please go ahead. No. Uh, yes, po, sir. Uh, from the Bureau of Local Employment, po, um, we serve as the secretariat po of the um, interagency monitoring committee um, of the First Time Job Seekers Assistance yeah. Act. And based on um, the implementation report that we had, sir, um, a total of um, wait, let's sure. 129,000 first time job seekers availed of the program. Oh, amen. Okay. Po nito, sir. Um, ito po yung mga nag-avail ng mga birth certificate. Ay, sorry, sir. Na mga barangay certificates from the barangays. Yung barangay certificate po natin for the information of everyone is the first um, pre-employment requirement po 
for the first time job seeker na makakuha ng iba pang pre-employment um, documents gaya ng NBI clearance, birth certificate, at iba pa pong mga um, pre-employment documents. Um, from 2020 to 2022, 129,755 um, first-time job seekers po yung nag-avail ng barangay yeah. certificate. Barangay okay. certificate. Okay. Uh, so ready to um, admit In terms of um, gender po, karamihan to sa ating mga first-time job seekers ay Mr. mga... Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, um, um, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Mas Chairman. Mas madami po yung... Sandali lang, uh, sandali lang, Mr. Lucas. No? May, yes, may sasabihin niya si Majority Leader. Majority Leader, yes? Pasensya na, Mr. Chairman. So, yung 120,000, just to uh, clarify, it's just for barangay clearance, if I'm not mistaken. Barangay clearance lang po yun. Do we have figures for as to how many NBI clearances were issued, how many police clearance, how many transcript of records, uh, if you are in uh, state college or universities, yung na-issue at naibigay dahil kasama din po yan dun sa Section 4 ng ating uh, First Time Job Seekers Assistance Act. Oh, please please answer if you know, um, Sir Lucas. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Pakipatay na lang yung computer pag, uh, pag may... Oo, kasi eh, parang sabi ni Senator Padilla, parang may alien daw eh. Kaya nat- natatakot kami dito. <laughs> yes, well, yeah. sorry po um, Senator Joe. Thank you, answer no your problem. Question po, on the number of um, availis po ng ating NBI clearance, meron po tayong as of um, first SEM po. It, first, ito, ito pong data namin, meron po kaming first SEM ng 2022. So ito po yung pinaka-latest po namin. Um, from January to June 2022 po, meron pong 67,000 um, first-time job seekers po yung nakakuha ng NBI clearance. Ito po ay um, sobrang lahi po nito kumpara dun sa previous natin na mga, na mga nakuhuwang um, number from the NBI. For the information of everyone po, yung you know, NBI you know, po, ito field. po yung isa sa pinakinukuha talaga ng mga first time job seekers na because it is the uh, I, so, most required I for the Senate pa. Uh, ang bill of rights for employment the documents po ng you know, uh, uh, mga employers po natin. Um, Sorry, Majority Leader, yes, you were saying? No, no, we, we, we are hearing your conversations, Mr. Chairman. Ah, yes, 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 so oh, pasensya na. Go ahead, go ahead, sir, please. Yes, po. In terms naman po ng mga birth certificates po natin, uh, meron lang pong 500 na mga first-time job seekers yung nakakuha nito uh, for the 2022 natin. So, um, this means na kailangan to po talaga ng public information campaign ng um, PSA at ng um, iba pa po natin mga agencies to avail of the pre-employment documents. Pero yung NBI po natin, sobrang dami po talagang kumukuha nito. Probably because, um, for the information po of our senators, yung NBI po kasi meron po silang online um, platform where FTJs can go through um, para makapag-avail po ng ano, online um, certificate ng mga first-time job seekers. Meron din pong kinuhuwang um, certificate mula sa Marina, yung Maritime Industry Authority po. A total of 3,150 po yung nakakuha mga first-time job seekers nito. Meron pong dalawang types ng certificate ito, yung basic tsaka po yung isang um, advance for the uh, marina. Um, in terms of sex po, um, equally um, divided naman po yung ating mga first-time job seekers, yung male tsaka female po natin, um, 28,000 for male and 28,000 din po almost for female. Yes po, Senator. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, sir. No, I think I, I I'm satisfied with the answers uh, given to us. Perhaps we could just ask for a uh, uh, update a written report. A written no? report. A report. Oh. I don't want to 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 stay longer and uh, belabor this so, issue. But I think it's very important. I think, Mr. Chairman, ang klaro na narinig natin ngayon is yung information campaign very important. If if, oh, if, if we'll be able to, to to do more of this, for example, tap our influencers. Itatap natin Yon. si, for example, Yon. si Senator Padilla, Senator Marcos, Senator Rafi Tulfo. Imagine, Alright. ang dami Alright. lalong mag-a-avail nitong uh, napakagandang programa ng pamahalaan para matulungan sila na makapagtrabaho. And number Agreed. two, I think it's very clear, as made mentioned by our friends from Dole, 
kung yung ating mga agencies of the government like NBI na online ready sila, maayos yung kanilang programa na makakakuha ng, uh, ng serbisyo online, then we'll be able to help more young people land jobs. So I think that's very important, Mr. Chairman, and uh, very telling itong information that we are getting from our resource person. So again, maraming salamat po. At, uh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, dear colleagues. Salamat ng marami, Majority Leader. Com we completely agree with Majority Leader Joel, San Joel, no? Ta talagang klarong-klaro din na maraming natutulungan itong uh, batas na sponsor po niya. Kaya uh, siguro hingi namin, Mr. Lucas, na i-profile nyo rin yung mga humihingi ng data sa inyo. Taga NCR ba sila or Greater Manila? Ibig sabihin nun, uh, kung karamihan ay galing sa isang rehiyon o isang uh, lugar lamang, ibig sabihin hindi nalalaman ng mga nasa malalayong lugar, di ba? So, i i mag mag let's use the data, yung datos para... Uh, magbigay ng feedback sa atin, di ba? Pag-analyze natin ng datos, anong ibig sabihin nun, di ba? Kapag isang region lang or walang taga region 5, for example, or walang taga region 8, ibig sabihin hindi na amplify dun sa region na yon yung programa, maaaring hindi nila alam. So, at uh, tama rin yung sinabi ni Majority Leader na let's use our uh, assets like Of course, the NYC and of course, the senators, I think, are willing to assist sa information, this dissemination, no? to be ambassadors for the youth program. Especially kung sila yung gumawa ng batas na yun, no? sila yung uh, nag-lead, nag-spearhead nung uh, campaign na yun. Like Majority Leader uh, Joel, I'm sure, is very willing no? uh, to, to, to head that. So, yun, yun, yun po, hingin, follow up lang namin sa inyo yung uh, request niya for... for uh, updated and accurate data uh, Mr. Lucas no salamat and we'll call on you later ah wag muna kay sana umalis kasi after the young farmers meron tayo yung inquiry natin into unemployment youth unemployment and uh, underemployment thank you thank you for your uh, uh, answers thank so you. i think uh, we can turn now to the next item on the agenda ito po yung uh, magandang batas po na panukala na final po ni Senator Amy at saka Senator Jingoy at Senator Loren Ito po yung Young Farmers and Fisher Folk Challenge Act. At ibibigay ko na po yung, sa kanya yung uh, mikropono para may sponsor at may paliwanag niya yung uh, layunin ng kanyang uh, panukalang batas. Senator Amy, please. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, simple lang ang batas na to. Ito ay uh, may kinalaman sa uh, umuunting mga nakikilahok sa pagsasaka sa ating bansa. Eh, kung dati-rati ay eh, napakarami ng ating mga tinatawag na magsasaka, ngayon eh, nasa wala pang mahigit kumulang sambung milyong katao. At uh, ang masaklap nun, paliit rin ang paliit ang productivity, higit sa lahat, nagtatandaan at lolo na ang lahat ng magsasaka. <laughs> ang average age ay pumapalo ng 57 years old. At sinasabi, sa taong 2030, wala nang uh, planted, grown, made in the Philippines na pagkain dahil dito. So nakakatakot po itong uh, kalagayan natin, higit sa lahat, nababalitaan natin lahat ang lahat ng shortages. Uh, sa panahong ito. So baka uh, bago pa tayo umabot ng 2030, eh talagang uh, hirap na hirap na ang mga batang magsasaka. So uh, ang totoo, through the generosity of our finance chair, who also happens to be our youth chair, uh, a budget allocation has been provided um, in the GAA from year 2021 of 100 million. And we were able to give over 1,800 participants in the provincial level. We have regional and national level. So napakalaki ng mga natulungan, 50,000 lang ang grant ng kada isa, almost 1,500 on 2021, 2022, umabot ng halos 2,000 ang nabigyan. Para sa kaalaman ng uh, body, yun ay inisyatibo po ninyo, Senator Marcos, na sinangayunan lang po natin. Thank you. Yes, pero... Ito yung maliliit na program na nanganganak at napakalaking tulong. Uh, it's uh, not true that the youth is no longer interested in agriculture. The youth is primarily interested in earning a living. At uh, kung kikita sila sa pagsasaka, anuman ang hirap at dusa, eh gagawin nila at babalik sila sa bukid. That's uh, my belief. So many of our farming communities produce children who are still interested in doing the traditional um, 
farming uh, jobs that they grew up with. Um, so kung tutuusin, mabait ang chairman namin, nagbibigay siya ng pera. So sana sunod-sunod to hanggang 2023. Pero ang batas ay kailangan pa rin. Sapagkat sa totoo lang, hindi lang legal cover. Uh, considering na tulad nung first uh, job seekers program, ito yung maliit na program na mukha namang pumapatok. So it would be nice to access also land um, under the DARDI and R and uh, LRA, given that so many of the students really have no land of their own and uh, cannot dictate what will be planted, uh, whether it's going to be aquaponics or any new process. Dahil siyempre, sumusunod lang sila sa mga lolo at tatay nila na may ari ng lupa. Dapat rin yung DepEd sana makatok sa TechVox, sa TESDA, sa Processing and Manufacturing, yung CHED and DOLE at uh, DTI para sa market access. So, kinakailangan natin ng batas para katukan lahat ng uh, maaring makatulong. And uh, um, although our chairman has been consistently uh, generous and understanding, I think uh, we need a uh, bill to cover this, a law actually to help young farmers. Salamat, salamat. Thank you for the kind words, uh, Senator Marcos. At uh, dagdag ko na rin, I uh, totally agree with everything she said. Uh, at uh, yung suks la ay potential din, especially sa land. Ang napakaraming lupa nung ating uh, state universities. I mean, yung iba, isang, isang daan, isang libong hektarya. So, baka pwedeng magamit sa ganong klase mga programa. So, does Senator Jingoy, who's also a co-author of the bill, uh, wish to sponsor? If he's, uh, only if he's online? Ah, no, he's, he's off. Ah, okay. Uh, Senator Ligardo, I think their version is... Uh, Substantially similar. Oh, may, may committee hearing din si sila Senator Ligard at Senator Jingoy. But their bills are substantially similar to Senator Marcos's. And also the committee report we released, uh, I think, late last year. No, Unfortunately, hindi na, hindi na aktuhan ito ng uh, ating uh, plenario. Yeah. We had the committee report already, which was substantially similar to your bill, uh, Senator Aimee, you know, with a few changes based on the base dun sa discuss, naging discussion. So again, we'll have the discussions. Uh, we'll give it uh, any comment from Senator Robin, kung meron man. Ako po ay masyadong uh, naliligayahan sa <laughs> pinag-uusapan. Yun lamang po, no? Gusto ko lamang pong balikan na uh, Mr. Chairman, yung uh, ating pong, ano, yung uh, magsasaka. Opo. Kasi tunay po yun na uh, ito po, experience po namin ito dahil kami po ay taga ang ang mga ang amin pong pamilya ay talagang magsasaka. Iyan po ang uh, ang aking ina ay may mga lupa. Ang uh, nakakalungkot po diyan. Sa amin pong magkakamag-anak, kokonti na lang ang gustong maging magsasaka. Dahil yung makita nila, yung mga tatay nila, mga uncle namin, hindi naman nagkaroon ng magandang future. Hirap na hirap doon sa pagsasaka tapos lugi pa Kat, katulad po ngayon ano uh, ang gastos daw para magsaka ang isang magsasaka ay 16 pesos na tapos binibili lang yung palay ng 17 pesos eh doon po alam nga naman piso lang yung labor no <laughs> ganun pa talong talo po ano talong talo opo kaya po sana ay uh, Uh, mabigyan po ng pansin nito dahil sa totoo lang po, sabi nga po namin nagkukwentuhan kami ng mahal nating tagapangulo kanina kung meron pong isang totoong security threat sa atin ay food security yeah. kapag tayo po wala ng makain ay yun na talaga, doon na tayo pupunta uh, yun lamang po kaya ako po ay napaka uh, kumbaga po sa salitang ano, eh, ako ay very supportive Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Maraming salamat po, uh, mahal na tagapangulo. Maraming salamat. I'm sure very appreciative po si Senator Aimee at ako bilang chairman eh, dun, dun sa kanyang suporta. At sa poll niyo po yung talagang kahalagahan nung uh, itong usap, usapin natin ngayon. So, we'll, if uh, can we hear from the DA? Uh, andito po si Yusek Christine Evangelista. Yeah. Taga, hmm? Logos ba yan? Okay, Logos. Okay, Logos. Okay, hindi, hindi. Uh, hindi. Uh, 
Uh, Ma'am Christine from the DA, Yusek. Yes, you... I'm here. Ah, hi, Yusek. Oh, good afternoon. Could you hi. comment? Would you care to comment on the Young Farmers and Fisher Folk Challenge Act, ni Senator Amy, please? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, po, sa ating mga honorable senators. Kami po ngayon ang nag implement ng Young Farmers Challenge. And uh, based on our experience, we started this in 2021. Napaka-receptive po ng ating mga kabataan. Actually, napakarami pa pong gustong sumali to sa ating Young Farmers Challenge. And being young, they're also very resilient. So yung mga innovations po pagdating sa agrikultura, sila po ay very receptive. So we really hope na papasa po ito dahil yung ating future nga po na mga magsasaka using innovations and technology will definitely get uh, the boost they need through this uh, Young Farmers Challenge po. Mr. Chair, magtatanong lang ako. Go ahead, go ahead. Senator. Itatanong ko lang sa kay Yusek at sa DA, yung kanilang budget, kasi nagtitipid tayo ngayon, ano, nagkaanap tayo ng pera. Yung uh, dati, yung ATI at saka yung 4H Club, ang balita ko wala na, kasi pwedeng ipagkaisa to, tapos yung pondo rin ng training ni uh, Senator Grace po. Siguro pwede natin i-consolidate itong mga programa to para magkaisa, lumaki, no additional budget. Pwede ba yun? Um, if I may, yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Madam Senator. Uh, Pinag-uusapan po namin ngayon ng ATI kung paano po yung budget nila will also help yung ating mga nanalo sa Young Farmers Challenge para po ito yung parang pinaka-phase two. No? After they win, we are going to train them even more. And at the same time, eventually another phase will be a uh, sustainability of whatever agribusiness po or yung kanilang mga production innovations. So, so we're also looking at uh, capitalization ng ating mga young farmers. So definitely po yung training, we will work with ATI para isang programa na po ito, holistic approach para po dun sa ating mga young farmers. Yeah, thank you very much. We're glad to hear uh, your supportive uh, USEC, Christine. Thank you. Uh, can we hear from the DAR? Uh, Department of Agrarian Reform. Si kasama yata natin si Yusek uh, Marilyn Yap and Sir Ronald Gareza. Are they online? Ayan, I see, I see our former sec gen at the house, si Ma'am Marilyn. Hi, Ma'am. Ma'am, you're on mute, I think, so you might want to unmute. Uh, po. Uh, magandang tanghali po, uh, sir. Um... Uh, magandang tanghali din po kay Ma'am Aimee. Hello. Sen. Robin, kasama rin namin si Sen. Robin. Si Sen. Robin and yeah. all the other honorable senators and the guests of the committee. Um, uh, comment po dun sa bill ni Ma'am Aimee, we, are, we support it. In fact, there is an existing, if I, if I recall it right, there's a section in RA 6657 which provides for the distribution of uh, agricultural lands currently owned by the government feasible for agricultural use for graduates of uh, no, agricultural courses uh, and it could be integrated into that program na pagka, pagka graduate nila mabigyan sila ng maari nilang sakahin ng sarili nila but the DAR um, can probably cooperate by coming up with a program that provides a, a firmer package of uh, support services for, for the purpose. Kasi uh, ang, ang, na, na, ang buod na isa sa mga na, nagagagap namin na buod ng bill ni Senator Aimee is to uh, enable them to become productive uh, new farmers of the future, bagong mga magsasaka na meron ng mga kaalaman sa mga bagong teknolohiya sa agrikultura para mapalago nila yung productivity ng kanilang mga matatanggap na lupa. And it's the same track with what is being pursued currently by the new programs of the Department of Agriculture, the vision being a new generation of farmers that will, you know, uh, transform the agricultural landscape and make land productive as well as their families economically um, productive senators. 
Salamat, salamat Ma Marilyn, Yusek. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, uh, just, can, can I just integrate? Uh, oh yeah, go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, perhaps since we have a history, well, I we we have been parts of the Kabataang Barangay for a spell a long time ago, decades back. Um, I think there is also perhaps a need to study if we could organize, uh, create organizations of young farmers again, but there are also existing organizations right now, but to bring them all together in a more cohesive network so that the, the programs of government to capacitate them or assist them or increase their capabilities to make better use of the farms or learn more, I must mugging systematic perhaps uh, organizing them into a national you know, national uh, uh, movement of young farmers for the future. Perhaps it's something that could be studied by those who are in the NYC and in the committee on youth, uh, so that um, perhaps it would be more on a continuing and systematic basis of assisting young farmers for at least the next decade, because this is critical in the uh, vision for making the agricultural sector more adaptive to the challenges of the next two decades of our country. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yusek. Yep. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll just add na yeah, lang siguro please, please, oh. na... I'm happy to tell you, Sek Mylene Baruayap, that in fact we have started organizing together with you, Sek Christine Evangelista of DA, the primary federations at the provincial level. And we're hopeful to integrate them into a national federation. And then after the required period of time, I believe it's two years, pwede na sila maging co-op para nagne-negosyo na sila on a national basis. I also have some notes that I accept from the Chairman of Agriculture, Sincha Villar. The uh, Senator rightly pointed out that there is no financial intermediary in the Council membership, and it is important that we probably put the uh, Land Bank of the Philippines parehong suki ng DAR at ng kabataan. And further, that the only uh, training mentioned is TESDA and and ATI. Um, perhaps we should add, given the uh, number of high school students and the uh, senior high school students, we should add the DepEd. And I think there should be a provision also for private agricultural and fishery colleges to receive student vouchers and such like. Uh, in other words, anyone who can train the kids should do so, including the farm schools of DA. Although they are not the uh, per se educational institutions they provide very valuable uh, agricultural local uh, know-how yes a very good idea please take note comsec when we if when we prepare the committee report the inputs uh, regarding the council composition uh now we we'll go to dost we have asek sahagun with us uh asek sahagun are you online yes uh, good uh afternoon. please go ahead uh, Good afternoon, Mr. Senator, and uh, all the honorable senators in this meeting. Uh, the Department of Sciences and Technology is also supportive of the uh, of the bill filed by uh, Honorable Ainu Marcos because uh, the DOST, being the generator of uh, technologies, is very willing to provide the technical assistance and the innovations that our youth uh, will need in order on agriculture. We also have started the, uh, uh, in line with the innovation startup fund, uh, we, the grant fund for startups is also, uh, has been established at Picard. And uh, this is one of the areas by which our, uh, uh, our youth who would like to pursue agriculture based uh, enterprises or businesses can tap with uh, also the technical support of the DOST. So, Mr. Senator, we are um, here to support the bill and provide the necessary assistance as far as science, technology, and innovation, including including trainings uh, that are needed by our youth to pursue agriculture-based uh, enterprises. Thank you, Mr. Senator. 
very much, uh, uh, ASEC. No? Thank you for mentioning that those programs. Uh, can we hear from DILG, Attorney Jocelyn Pelantagaan Reyes is uh, online? Attorney Jocelyn yes, Reyes. Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, good go afternoon. Ahead. Afternoon, please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and to our honorable chair. I am Attorney Reyes, as what uh, the chair mentioned, and I am representing the DILG. Mr. Chair, I would like to manifest that due to time constraints, as we have received the invitation only this morning, we were not able to submit our official official signed official position paper to the committee. But initially, this department has no objection to the passage of the proposed measures. Nonetheless, here are our initial comments. Uh, number one, as to the utilization of the SK funds, ang concern po namin dito, Mr. Mr. Chair, ay kung may matitira pa pong pera ang SK, considering that the recently enacted RA11768 uh, mand mandates the SK to provide honorarium for the SK members to be sourced from their own SK funds. Uh, number two, we also would like to include the ILG as one of the agencies to craft the IRR for this measure, considering the involvement of the local government units in the implementation of this measure. And along these lines, we also recommend to solicit the inputs of the different local government leagues, considering that uh, considering their mandate to provide funds for the implementation of the agricultural project. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all. Thank you, Paul. Okay, uh, that's very good. That uh, is correct. That's been a problem with the SK as well. Um, next on the list, uh, we here with call the NR, Asakiro Masuda, ED Maria Matilda Gadi. Are you online? Yes. Uh, is there anyone from the DENR? I think the interest here is to provide land to yes. the uh, young farmers, at least for mm -hmm. the period uh, that mm -hmm. they remain uh, minors or students. Pa. DENR, yeah. please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Yes, good afternoon. You're recognized. Yes, Madam Chair, good afternoon. And to the other members of the committee, I am attorney Joanna Mecasita from the Land Management Bureau. Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Chair, well, with regard to the bill, uh, our office commends the proponent in coming up with this piece of legislation that encourages the youth to venture into agribusiness and agri-entrepreneurship to promote food security as well and to develop the economy of the country. However, uh, this office has some reservations on the role of the DNR under Section 8A of the bill, Madam Chair, on extending short-term leases or provide free or subsidized agricultural lands for cultivation by the young farmers, Mr. Madam Chair. In view of the scarcity of lands available for cultivation, as most of the agricultural lands in the Philippines are already being cultivated or with existing claimants or occupants already, Madam Chair. Hence, we, we suggest that the lands that would be opened for cultivation by the young farmers should not be limited to agricultural lands, but also to forest lands, which could be utilized for agroforest development through the issuance of appropriate tenure instruments. Further, Madam Chair, the inclusion under Section 8, Paragraph D in the Bill of a provision about giving the young farmers priority to use and cultivate the excess land holdings of the of state colleges and universities is a good option to address the lack of scarcity of public agricultural lands available for cultivation and farming. Uh, further, Madam Chair, we suggest that partnership with private sector on the use of the excess or unutilized land holdings by the young farmers for cultivation or for other agricultural purposes may also be considered, Madam Chair. Um, with this, Madam Chair, we are we will be also submitting our formal position paper with regard to uh, this matter, Madam Chair. That would be all, uh, Madam Chair, for the DNR Land Management Bureau. Salamat uh, ng marami, DNR ASEC, Hiro Masuda. 
can we hear from uh, Dep Ed? Uh, we have, of course, Dr. Galban is right here with us uh, physically. Uh, Asek, please. Oh. Thank you, our Honorable Chair. The Department of Education has been a staunch advocate of ensuring that our young learners are interested in farming and fisheries. And that is why we have been strongly rolling out the Gulayan Sa Paralan, a sub-program of the department's national greening program that's also linked to our school-based feeding program. And we actually are very thrilled with the proposal of our Honorable Madam Senator, um, particularly when it comes to the potential mentorship that can be provided by DepEd, as well as, of course, the highlighting of its inclusion in the tech voc. And with that being said, we'd like to ask for the kind consideration of our Madam Senator to hopefully include us in the Council, um, the adoption of um, the provisions of Senate Bill 675, and include the members of DepEd in the YFFCC. Um, and also, we'd like to suggest that in terms of the membership of the council, not be limited to the undersecretary, as it would give more options to the head of agency to select and designate a representative to the council. But apart from that, the Department of Education is very much happy to support, Madam Senator. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Asek Galban. Mr. Chair, may I be recognized? Uh, yes, please. Who is this? Uh, could you, could you... I am Julie Buan from the DNR. Uh, I just would like, in addition to what uh, our colleague earlier shared, I... and so far as... I'm sorry? Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, in addition to what attorney had uh, espoused earlier, as to the support of LMB uh, to the overall issue on youth unemployment and underemployment, I'd like to spouse here, Mr. Chair, because I just got some data from the Forest Management Bureau that in so far as some of the programs of the DNR, we are into the solution of uh, 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 of this youth unemployment. Like we have this national greening program and we have hired uh, forest extension officers and other techni technical support staff uh, to, to lessen the unemployment issue. So thus far, in so far as the National Greening Program is concerned, we have a total uh, as of today of 1,871 hired as contractuals. Uh, under the greening program, and then we also have under the stero program or the so-called uh, stero rangers, we have also on contractual basis have hired uh, young boys, uh, not not young as but youth age of about less than a hundred, uh, your honor. So apart from that, we're still getting compilations from other sectors like the coastal. Uh, programs that we have so that we would be able to submit to you DNR. For the DNR. So, but as far as DNR is concerned, marami ho kaming, may component ho kami ng mga livelihood sa aming mga programa na makakatulong po dito sa mga Buti views. Buti nga, parang uh, mawala yung mintik na illegal lag. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, makakatulong po, lalong-lalo na sa programa ni uh, Madam Aini, Dahil sinusuportahan mo natin dahil I'm also from the north, so we are active. By the way, yun hong aming youth program ay nasa aming youth desk lang na tinatawag, no? And so, uh, aktibo po ang aming youth uh, desk para sa pagpapalaganap ng mga prog programa uh, para sa mga kabataan, 15 to 30 years old. As a matter of fact, we are even uh, uh, getting into climate change and getting the best practices of the IPU uh, uh, as well as yung mga ibang ibang mga grupo ng mga kabataan po. Yun lang po at uh, pag nakalap po namin ang lahat ng mga data isasubmit po namin sa inyo. Salamat ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, intervention. Uh, now chair. can we go to Ched? Ched please. Uh, Miss Yuri Castro are you online? Miss Yuri Castro of Ched. 
i-contact them ahead of time. Contact them na sila na. Si Ms. Yuri Castro, are you here with us? We'll ask the secretary to contact some of the resource persons para mabigyan na sila ng heads up na uh, sila na po yung susunod. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, yes. Is that Yuri? Yes. Uh, I am Director Romero Padin of the LLO. Ah, yes, go ahead, go ahead, Director, please. Yeah. yeah, I would like to add a comment from the Policy and Planning Service. Uh, first, uh, we suggest the consolidation of both bills into a single bill as the intent and contents of the bills are similar. Second, regarding the role of this department, Ma'am, tagasan po sila? Tagasan po sila? DNR po, sir. Ay, ma'am, can you just submit your paper? Kasi pangatlo ka na sa DNR na magsasalita eh. We'd like to yes, give... Yes, I don't know, Opo, pasensya na po ha, kasi medyo uh, ang dami naming guests. So, if you don't mind, uh, ma'am, director, could you submit your comments and definitely the committee will consider them in the preparation of the committee report. Pasensya na kasi you're the third person from your agency to speak. We'd like to give time to the other agencies na hindi pa nakakapasalita with your okay, intelligence. Mr. Chair, thank you. Apo. Salamat, Director. Thank you. Can we hear from Ched, uh, Ms. Yuri Castro, if she's online? If not, we have uh, from the DICT, Meryl Palengi. Palengi? Tama ba? Tama ba? Meryl. Yes. Uh, good, morning, uh, good afternoon, um, Mr. Good Chair and Opo, and committee members, uh, the DICT is currently finalizing its uh, position paper and we will submit it to the committee uh, as soon as uh, it is approved. Thank you. Okay, po. thank you. Uh, I see someone raising their hand. Is that Mr. Gayo? Mr. Gayo, please. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon. Agency, Good afternoon. Senator. Anong agency? Young Agripreneurs. Yeah, Mr. Gayo of the Young Agripreneurs of the Philippines. Go ahead, sir, please. Actually, I'm based in Bacolod. Okay. I have five points, but I'll do it quickly. Uh, yes, sir. In, okay, in section number one, why do why do we limit it only to children and farmers? Can we include it to all young people who would like to go into agriculture? Because there are many urbanites now because of pandemic who have discovered farming as a possible profession. So that's number one. Don't limit it only to children of farmers and fishery okay. Okay. sectors. Huh? Yeah, I think the intent, intent maybe the intent is be yeah. anybody between eighteen and thirty, yeah. na natural yeah. Filipino. That's a good point, no? But the intent really of uh, Senate yeah. measures because to it, be inclusive reading, of everyone. Reading yeah. the section four, it it's a bit limiting, no? Okay, thank you, yes. Senator Imi. Uh, go ahead with your other comments, sir. Uh, number two comment, Mr. Chair, is the role of the debt ed. As you all all very well know, there is already a bill or uh, an act of the rural farm schools. Establishment of the rural yeah, farm school law, yeah. which up to now the debt ed has not implemented fully, or what they did was simply to rename some schools, but they are not following. <laughs> they are not following the curriculum, which is the dual training system curriculum. One one week in school and two weeks in the farm. That is what is uh, unique in that curriculum. So maybe we should later on ask debt ed to explain why it was not um, implemented because I was involved in crafting that law and also in the IRR as, ma as the president of Philippine Federation Family Farm Schools. Okay, number three, Mr. Chair, is the role of Tesla. Uh, also in the past, we have this, when I was still with Miracle Foundation and with our management association in the Philippines, we have this project called the Farm Business Schools that we implemented with Tesla. So this is on post-secondary program uh, for uh, graduates of high schools. And th thanks a lot to the senators, there is already a ladderized program, which makes it possible for completers of the diploma to proceed to finish their bachelor's in any state or private university. So I think Tesla should also be alerted on why this program was not continued. Then number four, uh, Mr. Chair, is the access to land, okay? I, I read through the provisions, but something that we can take into account is that in urban areas, there are many idle lands. And now with urban agriculture already something that is popular, maybe the senators can consider the idea of taxing 
idle lands in urban lands. And one way to exempt the tax is to make those lands available for these young agrepreneurs, urban agrepreneurs, who would like to use that land, let's say, for two or three or five years. And last point, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, is the ATI and the DA, because it was also mentioned earlier. When I was still in Manila working with the then the director, Asterio Salyut of the ATI, we implemented the program called Pinoy Agripreneurs Program, where more than 500 students were sponsored for a ladderized two-year diploma program. So again, I would like to ask, why can't that be uh, revived? So that's all, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you very much, Senator Aimi, because I really find your bill very promising and refreshing because I have been involved in this advocacy for more than 30 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gayo. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Gayo. The, that's uh, very well taken. And certainly the addition of urban agriculture is uh, necessary given uh, what we suffered through COVID. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Thank you, Mr. Gayo. Maybe we'll, we'll turn it over. We, maybe before we let others speak, but uh, we'll... Uh, give DepEd an alert that they were mentioned with regards to the implementation or non-implementation of the rural farm schools law. So maybe you could prepare something uh, in response to that. And also TESDA regarding uh, uh, the need for more ladderized programs, no? Kung pa pwede, uh, regarding and the uh, eventually going to a bachelor's program in any SUC, as mentioned by Mr. Gaya. No? So just to give a heads up to, to TESDA. Okay. Anyway, maybe we should recognize TESDA already. Uh, we have TESDA ED, David Bungal Bungalion, ED, yeah. Executive Director, and Ms. Li Maria Linda Andrade, uh, spe TESDA Specialist Online. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for this recognition. Uh, of course, uh, let me just first uh, greet good afternoon to our Honorable uh, Sanyang, Senator Sanya Angara, our Chair and to the distinguished members of this committee with special mention to our very old testament, Senator Villanueva, and all present here today, of course. So let me uh, share the official statement of Tesla on the state bill number 180 and uh, 675. So Tesla is one of the advocates in strengthening the livelihood of the Filipino farmers and their families. Allows, does, allows the effort of an initiative of Senator Manang Aimi Marcos and Senator Jingoy Herzo Estrada uh, in addressing the minor pro problems of the youth, encourage them to pursue a career or engage in activities related to agriculture and recognize their vital role in the development of our communities. The agriculture sector has been the priority of the agency and the agency interposes no objection to the overall objective of the information bills and expresses its full support. May we inform the committee that the Tesla welcomes its inclusion in the Young Farmers and Fisher Folk Challenge Council to ensure a proper formulation and implementation of the program. Tesla considers working together with other agencies in the development of training programs focused on the agriculture sector. In support, Tesla has a total of 38 training regulations and 12 competency standards developed under the agriculture, forestry, and fishery sector as of August 2022. We'd like also to share that the financial literacy is covered in our training regulations on Agro Entrepreneurship National Certificate 2, 3, and 4. We'd like to share also that the uh, said sector is also emphasized in the implementation of the Tibet Innovation Centers program, which include enhancing related, agri-related, and its value chain Tibet programs with farm mechanization and automation training facilities that would provide the learners the platform to uh, do technology research and agriculture technology, and also uh, provide them the business platform for business incubation and prototyping of their research. Other uh, efforts include the establishment of technical excellence in agriculture technology Tibet programs among our uh, agriculture 
Tesla administered schools. And to continue, uh, we have also established the program on accelerating establishment of farm schools within farm enterprises. And this address now uh, the concern raised by our good friend Jose Gallo on farm business schools. So this has been emphasized and this has been already implemented and supported with even scholarships. Ito po yung PAFSE. And this is, of course, in partnership with uh, the ATI uh, of uh, DA because our requirement is their farm school should first be accredited by ATI before we give them due uh, recognition to implement agriculture-related programs. And we have also our RICE uh, Competitiveness Enhancement Fund program with DA, particularly on rice production. And right now we have uh, in a program with Israel, the Agro Industries and Agro Studies with Israel, which will provide an immersion to our uh, Tibet graduates in agriculture uh, for them to be exposed with new technologies. And we have just uh, also uh, recognized eight industry boards which we can work with uh, for the implementation of this measure once uh, it is uh, enacted into law. So with this, uh, Tesla fully supports the passage of this measure and assures its commitment once this uh, is enacted into law. Mr. Chair, we will submit uh, to the Secretariat the details of our uh, position paper, our support. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So we'll also now hear from DICT, Meryl Palenge. Are you online, ma'am? And after that, we'll go to Dole, the LCP, PASUK, DBM, BIFAR. I think that's about RAP and, and the youth groups. So, uh, Ms. Kas, um, Ms. Palenge from DICT, DLLS, DICT. Ah, meron na yon. Okay, sorry. I apologize. Uh, Dole, Mr. Lucas, he was with us a while ago. Would he care to comment? Yeah. Mr. Jerome Lucas again from Dole. Or Ms. Rosalinda Pineda, ang Division Chief, Chief ng Bureau of Local Employment. Either. Good afternoon. Yes, good I, afternoon yes, po, honorable senators. Yes, sir. Our uh, We actually support this legislative measure being filed by the honorable senator, uh, Ma'am Aimee Marcos. And uh, our uh, our concern po on the space, we are uh, we actually uh, support the uh, inclusion po ng space in the program, and we would also want to suggest po sana if the government internship program would also be included, so that our young workers would be able to work with the government offices okay, on the latest technologies and latest uh, 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 track po ng, ng ating uh, administration, so that uh, our young workers be able to experience also on how. We at the government are doing our jobs and that um, yun po, yung mga latest technology po. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Rosalinda Pineda. Thank, Thank you very much. We accept that addition. That's yeah. a very good idea yeah. that uh, they do undertake government internship. Yeah, okay. I approve na ni uh, ng author. <laughs> so, we'll go to LCP. Ma'am Maria Victoria, Veronica Hitosis from the director of the League of Cities of the Philippines. So it's relevant siguro dito yung urban agriculture yes. mentioned by Mr. Gayo a while ago. Yeah, ma'am, are you online? Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Afternoon po. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Mr. Chair, we apologize that we have yet to come up with an official position uh, paper. Submit na lang po, submit na lang. Opo, on the, on the, on the measures uh, being uh, put forward on the floor. But we undertake, Mr. Chair, that we will tackle this with our uh, newly... Um, elected national officers and uh and si Mayor Rama, no, is your oh, your new president, no? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair, and uh and we also have a focal mayor for youth. So okay. uh, the Sino first po one, Mayor Javi Benitez of Victoria City. Ah, the son of uh Congressman Al uh, Governor Albi, no? Mayor, mayor Albi now, Mayor Albi now, pala, oh, yes, former yes, Congressman, Mr. Chair. Oh. 
Um, and yeah. then, and, uh, yeah, and we have po instructions to be more uh, supportive and uh, decisive and more interna in intentional in, uh, in supporting bills geared towards uh, youth em employment and empowerment in the country. That's, that's good news. That's good news. Salamat po, uh, Ms. Itosis. And yeah. also, kasi naka-devolve yung agriculture extension. Eh. So, baka with the Mandana's ruling, di ba, with more resources, baka there is room for to assist the program or to have a counterpart at the local level, no? Yeah, exactly, okay. Mr. Chair. Regardless whether uh, urban or rural. rural Salamat po. Yes, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Pasok, uh, our president, Suki na po rito, si President Ronquillo. Uh, Suki um, po ng congressional yeah. hearings. Is he online? Over President Tirso? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Ay, uh, gandang hapon, President. Yes, Mr. Chair. Gandang hapon po, Senator uh, po. Angara. Of course, um, uh, Mr. Chair, we uh, support the bill uh, being proposed by Senator Marcos on uh, really supporting our youth to, to agriculture. Uh, hello, Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, President. Go ahead. Okay. As uh, contemplated on uh, Section 7, Letter D, on the role of issues, we really support and uh, agree on the uh, proposed role of SUCs of agricultural schools on, on the provision of uh, different schemes for distance, remote, and digital learning for our students so that uh, they can uh, be better reached by our SUCs and for them to be enticed to agriculture. As we also observe, Mr. Chair, the uh, enrollment in agriculture is uh, at Bindling, and uh, we commit to make it more sexy, quote unquote, Mr. Chair, by way <laughs> of uh, <laughs> maybe uh, flavoring technology on our curriculum just to attract more youth. To Kun, can you see program. Ibana Alawi? Kunin nyo na, no? <laughs> Ambassador <laughs> ng ano, young farmers. So. <laughs> so, in general, Mr. Chair, we do support the proposed measure by Central ME. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Salamat, President Tirso. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it's much appreciated yung support na po ninyo, given your you represent so many uh, state colleges and universities. Thank you. Um, now here from BIFAR, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, Attorney Cyrus or Cyrus Hasela. I hope I pronounced your name right, Attorney. Are you online? If not, uh, DBM, uh, OIC Director Nihal Abdul Rauf or Ms. Rowena Marte. I think are listed here as being online. Kung sino po ang uh, libre? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairperson. Yes, please identify yourself. You. Opo, sino po ito? This is uh, Good afternoon. DBM, Director Abdul Rauf. Um, ano po, OIC Chief uh, Budget and Management Specialist po, Division Chief, but I am here uh, on behalf of our Director Judith Kiazon. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Of uh, the DBM Budget Information Legislative Service. I would like, uh, uh, um, before I proceed, po, sir, good afternoon as well to Senator Amy Marcos and Senator Joel Villanueva and Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Um, the DBM will be submitting its final position paper on the bills, but uh, we would like to manifest that. I left my mic on. Go ahead. Sorry. The DBM will be submitting its uh, position paper, but nevertheless, um, upon our perusal... Can, can you submit bill, in one hour? Post... Can you submit that in one hour, Director? The joke lang. When will you submit? <laughs> Sige po. And, uh, as soon as you can, no? We'll, we'll uh, please submit your yes, position paper. Oh, okay. Okay. Salamat. Salamat, okay. Director. Thank you. But did you want to say something else? Sorry, I may have cut you short. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, as regards the establishment for creation of the Young Farmers and Fisher Folk uh, Challenge Council, po, we interpose no objection thereon. But we would like to note lang po that uh, based on the DBM's re-engineering the bureaucracy for better governance principles and parameters, a council is a policy-making body that will cater to policy issues or concerns of vital 
nationwide or international importance. We also support the proposal in the bill that the Philippine Council for Agriculture and Fisheries or PCAF shall provide technical and administrative secretariat services to the council. But to limit the operational costs, po, the provision of secretariat services to the council's member agencies shall be handled by the organic personnel of the PCAF. That would be all, po, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Um, can we now hear from BIFAR, Attorney Hasela? Are you online? Yes, Your Honor. Um, ah, go ahead, Mr. please, Chair, Attorney. Um, we, we will submit our official uh, position paper, but uh, uh, um, we are one with the um, we are one with our um, position, the position of the Department of uh, Agriculture in supporting uh, Senate bills one eighty and sixty five and Senate resolution one five five. Salamat, you, salamat po, Attorney. Um, can we now hear from the private groups? Um, we have with us Mr. Rovin James Kanha. Uh, uh, just tell us a little bit about your group, sir, please. Uh, actually, sir, um, I'm also an, uh, an, an office under the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Youth Affairs. Bed, uh, bed, bed. So actually... Uh, gusto mo bang kontrahin si... <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll give you the floor. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, kung agree ka lang, di ko na... Di ko na, yeah, na kita yes, actually, the joke lang, joke lang. training program is uh, under our division okay. and uh, we are really now focusing um, on having the care guidance be activated to ensure that uh, we will be motivate uh we'll be motivating our learners to uh, venture into agriculture so yeah just to support the uh message of our assistant secretary thank you sir thank you sir um can we hear from the parauma farmers what is the name of the representative parauma farmers whoever is representing the parauma farmers online as well as the safe young organic farmers group the young farmers challenge club any any anyone representing these groups? Christine Piloton from the Young Farmers Challenge Club. Stand. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. I'm a beneficiary of last year. Yeah, yeah. Christine, go ahead. Okay. I understand that according to Senator Marcos, you're one of those involved in the program. Maybe you could share with us your what's what how, how your experience has gone under the program, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon to our honorable senators and members and guests of the committee. So I am Christine Claire Arsenal Peloton. I am the elected YFCI chairperson. So YFCI stands for Young Farmers Challenge Club of the Philippines Incorporated. So we are Filipino young agripreneurs dedicated to uplifting our agriculture sector and serve as youth ambassador who inspires our fellow youths to engage in agriculture. So YFCI CI was formed through the Young Farmers Challenge, a competitive financial grant assistance program developed by the Department of Agriculture through the Agribusiness and Marketing Assistance Service, or DAAMAS, and supported by Senator Amy Marcos in 2021 for the youth who will engage in new agri-fishery enterprises. So, um, meron po coming um, different um, uh, winners from the provincial, regional, and national levels, and from last year, uh, we have more than 1,000 uh, win uh, provincial winners who received 50,000 cash grant to start our agri enterprises. And um, as of the moment, we are having the season two of the Young Farmers Challenge. So during the um, awarding last year, the national awarding, uh, the group, the national uh, awardees agreed to have a group that will lead young Filipino agripreneurs in the country and at the same time, encourage the youth to engage in agriculture and basically and basically come back in the agriculture industry. So, kami po yun. And um, in behalf of YFCI, uh, I would like to um, stay, take this opportunity to thank the uh, Senator Amy Marcos for sponsoring no, the Young Farmers Challenge. So, uh, ayun po. And um, um, with regards naman po sa sa act establishing the Young Farmers and Fisher Folk Challenge Program. So, of course, we are supporting it. And siguro po yung one comment lang uh, that we have is that um, the Section 4, the beneficiaries of the YFFC program, 
it was specified that the, the program is intended for those registered in the RSBSA. So, yung isang system po ng the Department of Agriculture that maybe can be um, um, considered is the FIDIS or the Farmers and Fisher Folk Enterprise Development. Information system since yung mga um, more on sa uh, production po kasi yung RSBSA and yung more on sa uh, processing naman po can can register sa FIDI. So maybe we can consider, uh, you can consider din po that for the um, section 4 po nung uh, act. So yun po. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. I think ibang uh, young farmers or youth groups natin. Para Uma Farmers, we have James Fresnido or Jaril J Emano. Are you here online? James Fresnido or Jaril Emano. And from Safe Young Organic Farmers, Vic Jason Taguba, founder. And the Federation of Agricultural Students in Mindanao, Rhea Jane Listahan. Any of those mentioned are would care to give their inputs? Yes, hello po. Yes, please identify yourself, please. Yes, uh, hello po. Uh, before anything else, I would like to uh, give my warmest um, thank you po. I am from a small village of Balingasag, Misamis Oriental. Oh, uh, man. Man. <laughs> Ako po si Vic Jason Christopher Fabre Tagupa. I am the founder of Safe Young Organic Farmers. Isa po kaming uh, very young and small organization. Basically po, uh, we have a farm school po, Kapimo yung family namin. Tapos with the consent of my parents po, uh, we um, donated three plots para lang po sa kabataan dito sa aming village. So yung 15 uh, youth namin po, tinuruan po namin kung paano magplant uh, organically. Tapos we guided them. Tapos yung plots po, sa kanila na po talaga. So basically, yun po yung Safe Young Organic Farmers, we gave opportunities to the 15 youth here in the village of Balingasag po. Um, speaking for the youth po, naniniwala po talaga ako when it comes to, to us, the youth, it's really just a matter of being able to grab certain opportunities. I am very confident po na yung youth po, lalo na po yung mga Filipino youth, uh, we are very skilled. It's just that maybe a lot of us lack opportunities po. So I think dyan po dapat papasok po tayo kasi kami po, we are also a farm school. Our, or, uh, the Safe GCC Inc. Bread Life Family Farm Entrepreneurial School is a farm school. So we are verified and uh, registered by TESDA as a TVET institution. We are also recognized by ATI as learning site. So I, I am just thinking maybe naman po ng sa lahat po ng farm schools, maybe we could provide a, a small part of our land or a small part of our farm school just directly for the youth po. So maybe we can we can try to make sure na yung ina-avail po nating mga scholars ay talagang youth po or agri-youth. Or maybe we can uh, extend parang CSR po, corporate social responsibilities for the youth na mag-hire tayo ng youth or yung para pong it'll just really give them opportunities to work po. So yun lang po yung sasabi ko po. Thank you very much po. Thank you. Very much uh, for the inputs, very specific inputs uh, Big, Big Jason. Um, and we hear from Panau Parauma Farmers, James Fresnido or Jay Rilemano, if you are online, or the Federation of Agricultural Students in Mindanao, Rhea Jane Listahan. Uh, maybe if there's no response, we'll ask the ComSec to get in touch with them for a written uh, submission. Yun na lang po ang nakalista. Any other, uh, maybe? Ah, okay. We have the, oh, we've not heard from the from the ED of uh, actually NYC. Baka may ano sila, ma'am? Okay, Ma maraming salamat po muli, yeah. uh, taga -pangul uh, ginoong tagapangulo ng Kapulungan. Uh, Senator Angara. NYC supports any bill or measure that would promote and encourage youth participation in agriculture, fisheries, food security, and ru rural development, and if possible, harmonize harmonization of two bills po. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank Maraming you. Salamat. Thank you, Idilea. Uh, can we hear from the Model SK, Ky Kyla Meneses, Model SK, one for our youth uh, groups. 
kung online pa sila. And also from the Center for Youth Advocacy and Networking or CYAN, Zara May Navarro, the program manager of CN. Are you are you online, people? Agri students in Mindanao. Okay, I think you're raising your hand, Miss Ria Jane Listad. Please go ahead. Hello, po. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, ayong hapon. So, I am Rhea Jane Listahan, uh, the representative of the Federation of Agriculture Students in Mindanao, or the FASMIN. So, the said Congress is an annual gathering or students in agriculture and allied fields from different universities and colleges to keep them ab uh, abreast with local and regional issues and development trends in agriculture. So, wala po talaga akong masyadong background of this kasi hindi po kasi ako yung uh, naka-experience ng FASMIN kasi I am a newly elected president lang po ng school namin. Pero ano po siya, uh, it was happened last 2020. So, uh, due to um, may nangyaring pandemic, so hindi na siya nasundan ng another, uh, other uh, FASMIN. Pero we are expecting na uh, hope this year na maka mag, uh, meron na ulit ng mangyayaring uh, fast mean or ganitong activities. So, uh, uh, itong mga activities na to is for the agriculture um, colleges and universities. So, um, last time dito siya na held sa school namin, which is dito sa USTP Claveria. So, merong mga different activities na nangyari, especially yung mga related sa agriculture. So, yun lang po yung masasabi ko for the fast mean po. Thank you. Matreya, uh, that was Fasmin. So last call for the ones we mentioned earlier, Parauma Farmers, Model SK, Center for Youth Advocacy and Networking. Kung anja dyan pa po kayo. Okay, we don't uh, hear any response. So uh, maybe we'll give the last word to our, to our uh, good author, Senator Aimee, if she has uh, anything to say uh, to add. Yes, thank you very much. Well taken. Yung mga suggestion ng iba't ibang uh, um, mga ahensya at saka grupo ng kabataan lalo. At uh, syempre, uh, integrate natin yan sa committee report ulit ni Chairman Angara. Salamat. Thank you very much, Senator Marcos. And of course, uh, if there are no, please uh, for all the resource persons and feel free to add to what you've uh, mentioned today. At dun sa ating uh, Nagsabing magsasubmit, pakifollow up na lang, Comsec, David, please, and uh, uh, my staff. And uh, for the queries, I hope there were no queries left hanging because, syempre, maraming mga inquiries. Uh, please look over the transcript and uh, see if there are any queries left hanging. And please follow up on those queries para uh, kompleto po yung pag-prepare natin. Uh, Mr. Gayo, yeah, raising your hand. Go ahead, Mr. Gayo. Uh, you're on mute, sir. Please, you're on mute. Uh, just a reminder, Mr. Chairman, you asked DepEd to respond on the implementation of the rules. Yes, they will submit. They will submit a. Because uh, bago pa ho sila, so we're asking them to comment on a on a uh, on a law that they've only had two months. I'm sure they're still finding their feet. So begin natin po sila ng konting panahon para uh, may makabuluhang uh, sagot po tayo, sir. Okay po. Last last lang po. Actually, it's in the chat box, but I can just read it. Uh, can we consider changing the title from young farmers to young agripreneurs and aquapreneurs instead of fisher folk? Because this we'll, term in the Philippines is very demeaning. Yeah, we'll take that under consideration and get the feedback from the authors, uh, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Salamat, po. Salamat. Thank you for your participation, Mr. Gayo. Yeah. Thank you, Senator Marcos. So we'll uh, instruct the committee secretary to, to liaise with uh, the offices of Senator Marcos, Senator Jingoy, Senator Legarda before finalizing the committee report. And of course, all comments are welcome uh, to make this bill more responsive, inclusive, and uh, achieve its uh, objectives. So, salamat. Thank you to all our resource persons. Uh, maybe we'll take a five-minute break before we move to the next item on the agenda, a health break to allow our resource persons to uh, do what they have to, have to do. So, we'll see you all in five minutes, Your Honors. Thank you. To tackle the uh, inquiry on youth employment and underemployment. Just for just to let our resource persons know, we'll only go until around four o'clock. Uh, it's already we have uh, it's almost three twenty. So 
uh, we'll have about a half hour maybe to begin the inquiry because I don't think we can tackle all aspects anyway. So thank you. We'll see you in uh, five minutes. Thank you.
ang huling item sa agenda natin. Ito po yung inquiry in aid of legislation on uh, relating to Senate Resolution 155 on youth unemployment and underemployment. So, yun yung concern natin. It's not unique to us. Siyempre, ibang bansa, may problema din dyan. Uh, but siyempre, gusto natin tutukan ito dahil sabi nga nung mga dalubhasa, eh, there is a demographic dividend, di ba? Yung benefit to having a young population. But you only, countries can only reap that benefit if they educate and they invest in the human capital. So, ang tanong, well, nagpasa tayo ng mga batas at uh, maybe we should check if uh, we are investing enough, number one, and uh, if we are reaping that benefit. No? Si Asek Galban uh, is all tamang-tama galing sa Popcom. So, kabisado, he was nodding his head. So, we're very interested to hear what you have to say, uh, Your Honors, on this topic. Uh, where's our guest list? Uh, so of course, dahil employment po yung usapin, unahin na muda atin yung dole, no? So, andyan dyan sila, Director Pineda, Director Patrick Patriwaran. Patriwaran? Patriwaran. Oo. Ma'am, sir? I just go down the list, no? Para makapaghanda yung iba. NYC, DepEd, CHED, TESDA, PASUK, NEDA, PIDS, uh, Center for Youth Advocacy and Networking, uh, please. You will be recognized, all of you, at the given time. Please limit your interventions to five minutes, more or less. Unahin na po siguro natin yung mga nandito dahil they, they, Deped, uh, Asek Galban, please. Once more, thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Um, hopefully, we can have a presentation shown on the screen so that our guests online will be able to view it as well. Sure. Please. Anyway, while we're preparing, uh, while we're waiting for that, just to place on record that our youth employment unemployment rate as of June 2022 is 11.8%, roughly around 850,000 individuals. And our youth underemployment rate is 10.3% as of June 2022, uh, representing around 650,000 uh, individuals. Please correct these figures if they are incorrect or mistaken. Yeah, okay. We have the presentation ready. Go ahead, uh, Asek, please. Yes, thank you very much. Again, an honor to be here today um, representing our Vice President and Secretary of Education. So let's go to the first slide, please. According to the PSA, as of May 2022, our youth labor force reached uh, 7.3 million of the estimated 20.14 million youth population or those between 15 to 24 years old. So youth employment rate also improved to 87.9%. Um, in May 2022 as compared to 85.5% in May last year. So juxtaposing the two. On the other hand, youth underemployment rate likewise increased to 11.6% from 10% in May 2021. We're also factoring here in the issue of um, COVID-19. It was also identified that the top five subsectors with the highest decline in employment from May 2021 to May 2022 were agriculture and forestry. So thankful that uh, Senator IME was here earlier. Um, public administration and defense, education, financial and insurance activities, and other service sectors. Um, given that, next slide, please. With this given mandate, our freshly newly created office that will hopefully consolidate all government programs related to the youth shall focus on ensuring our Filipino youth are equipped with the necessary skills needed to become part of the labor force. Our understanding, our dear senator, is that when people graduate from grade 12, they are already life and work ready. Um, so we want to complement the current initiatives of the curriculum and instruction strand of DepEd um, and the alternative learning system. We shall be mobilizing our young people to become future leaders of the 21st century. So we, in our best efforts, shall undertake projects and programs to address 
underemployment and unemployment, such as um, among the following, um, the Special Program for Employment of Students, or SPES, the Government Internship Program, and the Career Guidance Initiatives under the guidance of our Curriculum and Instruction Strand, plus, of course, our Capacity Building Programs ongoing, and projects for youth and financial literacy, which I believe our dear Senator is a staunch champion of, as well as entrepreneurship, work, and productivity, as well as other skills. So as mentioned earlier, um, included in our programs is SPES. So um, according to the revised Integrated Manual of Operations of SPES, since its implementation in 1993, it has been considered one of the government's most relevant and worthwhile youth employment programs, and we highly suggest the exploration of its expansion. This year, DepEd has had its run um, of SPES for 30 days from July 11, 2022 to August 19, 2022, and our office served as the secretariat of the program. Moreover, through partnership with the Department of Labor and Employment, 60% of the allowances and salaries were paid by DepEd, while the remaining 40% were paid by our partners from the Department of Labor and Employment. Um, the SPES program in particular concluded in a completion ceremony just recently, August 29, with a total of 78 beneficiaries. And during the said completion of the program, they were already being prepared for employment. One of the more notable cases, um, our dear Senator, is a Habal Habal driver who completed the program and because of outstanding performance was fully absorbed by the Department of Education. So given that there is this merit coming from the program, we highly recommend the potential expansion of the program, more so cascading to our local government units and other national government agencies. Um, with that being said, thank you, Your Honor. Lamat, thank you very much, Asek. That's good to hear, very encouraging. No? We passed an amendment to the SPES program back in around 2016, I think 2015, to, in, to, co to increase the coverage in terms of age. So hopefully, there's a lot of beneficiaries there. Thank you, Asik Kalban. So if our friends from Dole are online, maybe we could give them another chance. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, yes. Senator uh, Angara. I actually, tama po yun, yung, yung, at the time that you have uh, introduced po yung amendments, marami po talaga nag-benefit doon. And uh, we we uh, ano po yung uh, implementing rules and regulations talaga uh, inayos po namin po for the implementation of our uh, of our partners sa uh, sa baba. So when it comes to youth employment programs, actually we are implementing the special program for employment of students. And uh, uh, as of uh, this uh, year. We have already accomplished um, uh, in support of the of the uh, move of the government to to help the unemployed youth. Uh, that's what actually we uh, we implement for the SPES uh, since 2016 up to this time. We have already uh, we already have a total of um, for 2022. We have a total of 77,000 uh, uh, 57,632 beneficiaries. For uh, for a budget of seven hundred twenty thousand uh, point seven hundred twenty point two uh, twenty six million, and in twenty twenty one we were able to assist or help one hundred thirty nine thousand two hundred forty four youth for a total of four hundred twelve million point five eight one budget, and for twenty twenty we were able to help also although this is a, a pandemic at the height of pandemic we still we were still able to help forty thousand. 204 youth or students, and we were able to uh, spend 514 million point 252 thousand for for our availees. And when it comes for for our government internship program, we're in uh, our uh, partner uh, partner uh, agencies, our government uh, partner uh, stakeholders, our agencies, po, government agencies. We were able to uh, assist a total of um, for the GIP. We were able to assist. Uh, 23,201 as of this time and a budget for a budget allocation of 637.716 million and for 2021 we were able to help 63,349 beneficiaries for a budget of uh, 637.716 million so the same for your adding budget from 2021 to 2022 
Um, when it comes to the job start, uh, we were able to uh, assist for um, a total of uh, job start. For the job start, we were able to help beneficiaries. Sorry. Sabit yun na lang, ma'am. It's okay. Yes, Sorry. Po. Sige po. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, ano po, yung uh, last po, yung uh, first time job seekers assistance. Ma'am, ma'am. Oh, po. Ano po, uh, in addition dun sa figures for job start, may uh, curious din ako bakit parang ang sabi nga nila, ang taas nung hiring rate nung job start because may apprenticeship nga yun sa, so nakikita talaga nung employer kung gusto niyang kunin yung apprentice doon. I'm just wondering bakit hindi lumalaki or the interest, could you just give us a short report on what, of if uh, interest in the program is uh, is there uh, from companies and uh, ano yung potential for uh, absorption or roll out nationwide. Yun lang po. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, ma'am. Yes, sir. For the job search program, actually, some of uh, the fall-offs po kasi talagang uh, nakakakuha po sila ng trabaho sa ibang companies. Some are actually absorbed. But uh, we were able to, uh, ano po, one, uh, yung ating po mga trainees in 2022 as of uh, to date, we have 1,001 uh, life skills trainees wherein our placement rate is 10%. So, meron po tayong 101 placement for the Job Start program, but for 2021 po, we were able to to have to place 1,535 uh, trainees po ng Job Start. So that's a 40% placement rate po. Hindi pa po kasi tapos yung for 2022 uh, implementation, and therefore yung po ating 10% uh, might increase before the end of the year. Yeah, very good, very good, ma'am. Congratulations for that uh, increased rate. Maybe uh, you could just give us a short, very short, not now, but uh, in the future, uh, in a written explanation. Bakit, ano yung, ano yung reason for the success? And, and if yes. it can be uh, duplicated on a larger scale or, or uh, increased on a larger scale para mas maraming makinabang uh, yeah, director. Yun lang po. Thank, Thank you. Thank you and congratulations. Senator. Salamat po. Salamat po. Uh, Again, we'll go to NYC, Director Leah, once more. Um, maraming pong salamat, uh, ginoong tagapangulo ng Kapulungan. Uh, para po sa aming sectoral status, according to the recently finalized NYC's annual youth statistics update 2021, there are 31.77 million Filipino youth aged 15 to 30 years old who comp comprise the majority of the population of the country. Divided further into age groups, those who are age 15 to 17 uh, years old comprise 19.52% of the total youth population. Uh, under the age of 18 to 24 years old, this comprise 44.54%. Uh, for the young adults, uh, age 25 to 30 years old comprise of 35.95%. In terms of uh, sex disaggregation, there are more Filipino youth who are males at 51.33% versus females at 48.67%. The youth sector that is also composed of many diverse groups, depending... Sorry, yes, Edie. Male is how many percent? 51.33%. Ah, okay, 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 thank you. Um, uh, composed of many diverse groups depending on their socioeconomic status, indigenous groups, uh, group affiliations, sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, presence of disability, geographical location, and educational attainment. In terms of regional population, majority of the youth come from Region 4A with more than 4 million of total youth population. This is followed by NCR. And then Region 3, the Cordillera Administrative Region has the lowest number of total youth population with less than 1 million, followed by Region uh, 13 and then Mimaropa. Um, for the economic empowerment, uh, due to the prolonged lockdown, the Philippine econ economy has faltered. This led to youth unemployment, especially since business activities got crippled due to 
the pandemic. This has consequences to income, education, and food security. Added to this is the increased percentage of job losses, reduction in the number of working days, lesser salaries and wages, and reduced allowances. In addition, the reality of job mismatch with 37.61% of the surveyed youth depicts that individual skills, experience, and education are less likely to be material anymore as long as that specific nature of the job manages to sustain one's financial needs but can be viewed as a threat because educational attainment still creates more opportunities for the youth sector. Um, for Under the alternative job opportunities, having the pandemic as a hindrance from getting more job opportunities, the study showed a fairly high participation rate at 65%, perhaps engagement of the youth on various activities, utilizing the much convenient array, the online and or with virtual setup. These include online selling, tutorial services, planting vegetables, and selling of their own harvests, BPO with a work from home arrangement, likewise starting their own business. Whereas it is to understand that these opportunities may seem alternative but are still considered susceptible towards any deprivation of their fair practice policies, compensation, and benefits. Therefore, a method to ensure the protection and enlightenment towards such much be provided. Um, we have a, um, a PYDP uh, evaluation report from 2017 to 2022. Medyo mahaba po Mr. Chair. Uh, but just a, a brief um a preview on our evaluation report na magbibigay po kami ng kopya sa lahat. Uh, for the economic empowerment, our first strategy is optimize youth participation in the labor force. So our objective is to decrease unemployment, underemployment, and job mismatch for working youth. Increase part-time employment opportunities for uh, in-school youth. Green, uh, increase green jobs. Increase productivity and employment in agricultural sector. Our second strategy would be um, stopping the youth participation in vulnerable employment. So our objectives are decrease in child labor, decrease in trafficking of the youth, lessen the number of youth who work unpaid or without benefits, uh, lessen the abuse of WY, uh, decrease work-related hazards and illnesses. Uh, last, uh, uh, on the, our third strategy is promoting youth participation in entrepreneurial activities. So we want to increase the number of youth uh, entrepreneurs. Lastly, we want to strengthen youth participation in employment enrichment support systems. So our two objectives here are increasing the number of school uh, break or internship jobs uh, and increase in counseled youth regarding their career options. Uh, yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Maraming maraming salamat. Thanks Mr. very much, uh, um, Director Lea. And we now hear from uh, Ched. If, hopefully they're online. Ms. Yuri Castro. Are you online? Ms. Castro from Ched. Yes, good afternoon po. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Magandang hapon po. Sa Hi, magandang hapon po. Yes. 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 First of all, I would like to apologize for having been unresponsive a while ago po. And then SHED will submit its official position a paper and inputs with regard to this Senate resolution and as well as we um, manifest strong support to the intention and implementation din po of the legislative measure on the Young Farmers and Fisher Folk Challenge. To manifest further po, the Commission appreciate and support the discussions in strengthening and is strengthening um, existing government um, programs aimed at assisting youth employment and institutionalizing additional reforms. In this regard, po, may I read the document prepared by the CHED, Office of Student Development and Services, if I may. Po. The Commission is implementing um, the existing CHED Memorandum Order Number 09 Series of 2013 which is entitled Enhanced Policies and Guidelines on Student Affairs and Services 
and the CMO number 8 series of 2021, which is entitled Guidelines on the Implementation of Flexible Delivery of Student Affairs and Services, SAS programs, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Under this CMO SPO, all, uh, all higher education institutions or HEIs should ensure the student's welfare by providing career and job placement services. The assistance provided for vocational and occupational fitness and employment are stated such as the HEI shall institute valid appraisal data of students for career and job placement. They shall have continuous follow-up and monitoring of student placement conducted on a regular basis. Second, the HEI shall maintain active networking with school community, school community, alumni, and other relevant agencies for career and job placement of students. Third, informative materials in accessible formats on career and job opportunities shall be provided and skills development programs shall be made available. Fourth, there shall be a regular career seminars and job placement services available for the students. Next one is there shall be mechanisms to institutionalize the link with industries. And the students must be informed of the timelines for the concerned HEI's assistance in seeking career and job placement at least until a specific uh, period of time. Moreover, Po, the commission is currently in collaboration with the Department of, Law, of Labor and Employment or the DOLE for the formulation of the career guidance development support for 2022 to 2027 for higher education sector, wherein um, we aim to ensure that students in HEIs are equipped with informed career choices and paths, guided by ex expert institutional assistance, and supported with government's proactive measures to facilitate holistic development of the students in becoming pro productive and responsible Filipino citizens. It also intends both to improve access to career guidance advocates through establishment of career centers in HEIs, provide capability training to career advocates and professionals in HEIs, and also intensify partnerships and collaborations of government, non-government institutions, and stakeholders. Um, that is all, Paul. Thank you very much, Paul Chair. Salamat. Uh... Uh, Ms. Yuri Castro, do you have data on uh, jobs, yung jobs among fresh graduates? Meron ba tayo dyan? Regarding the graduates uh, of higher education, HEIs, higher education institutions? As of the moment, Chair, we, um, we have no data available, but we, we take note of your request so that we can float or um, create a survey on, on yeah maybe data. yeah that would be good uh, if you could uh, ask maybe the the those who hindi naman siguro lahat may datos pero kung sino ang meron if they could submit to us and uh, maybe also data on uh, kasi one of the concerns is yung job skills mismatch no so um whether they're yung mga what are the common what 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 courses are increasing uh of course, that's an indication of uh, job market information. No? Yeah, dahil doon pumapasok dahil siguro narinig nila maraming trabaho doon. Oh, criminology, nursing, etc. But, but, but please check na lang. Uh, whatever you have, we'll appreciate it. Even if it's disaggregated, uh, it would be useful, I yes. think. Kahit pa paano. Thank you. Okay, po, Chair. Thank you, po. Salamat. Uh, Tesda, maybe may idadagdag si E.D. Bugalyon regarding... What was submitted uh, kanina? Uh, what, what, anong, ano pang nasabi kanina? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Attorney Joyce Balaw, in the presentation of TESTA, in behalf of A.D. Bongganyon, may I please be recognized? Yeah, please, Panera, go ahead. Uh -huh. Foremost, TESTA Tibet bridges um, young job seekers to employment through technical education, and we would like to inform the Honorable Committee of the efforts undertaken by this authority as follows. First, TESDA has long been offering the following scholarship programs where young job seekers can avail, namely Training for Work Scholarship Program or TWSP, Private Education Student Financial Assistance, what, or what we call the PESPA, Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education or the UACP, Tulong Trabaho Scholarship Program or TPSP, 
and special training for employment program or SEP. Secondly, test the works with the Philippine Business for Education or PIBED through a memorandum of understanding for the Youth Works PH, a workforce development project to provide skills training to youth not in education, employment, or training, or what we call as the NEDP. The agreement covers the updating and improvement of relevant curricula and training regulations in the formulation of industry immersion programs for trainers, among others. Thirdly, in partnership with the PIPET, test the commission to study as part of its policy research series on youth NEEP, which seeks to answer the drop-off points of learners across the education continuum, the process of NEEP computation and monitoring across government agencies, the number of NEEP potential Tibet learners, and the barriers NEEP faces in pursuing further training. In addition, TESTA annually undertakes the study on the employment of Tibet graduates, SEEG, uh, which is a trace or study intending to track the activities of the Tibet graduates. It provides information on the employment status of the graduates after completing a Tibet program. The results serve as a tool in determining policy recommendations that lie PSD in planning and policy making for the whole Tibet. A sector. Lastly, a labor market intelligence report, uh, which we call as the LMIR, is also issued by the agency to provide updated information on the current job market, industry issues, employment projections, and other related phenomena, including the skills requirement of the industry, identify gaps between the requirements of the industries and the current programs of TESTA, and provide recommendations in addressing the skills requirements of the industry. Towards this end, um, Please be assured of TESTA's full support to these measures once the bill is enacted in the law. And uh, Mr. Chair, we will be submitting a position paper containing all that we have mentioned this afternoon. This afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, just a question on the last two items you mentioned, uh, yung tracer study and yung intelligence report. Could you share with us the highlights of those reports and when were the most recent uh, studies undertaken? Mr. Chair, may I be uh, recognized? This is uh, Maria Linda Andrade, the Chief of Policies and the uh, Planning Division. Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, the latest was uh, 2019, our late uh, Tracer 7 Set G, wherein we have. Um, what year was that, ma'am? What year? 2019, sir, the one that Pre I. Pre pandemic, have okay, yeah. Uh, Please go ahead, please. Uh, yes, sir. The tracer studies, um, employment rate, sir, is can you hold on, sir, please? Maybe you can just submit it, uh, ma'am. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, sir. nag lag po yung computer ko. Ah, okay. Kala ko yung computer nyo na sa Zoom ang naglalag pala yung computer na ginagamit. So, so, anyway, data, uh, data, what, what we're really interested in, ma'am, are alin yung mataas ang employment uh, sa courses? Kasi I, I'm assuming you're, you're studying each... Uh, uh, ang tawag dan, dun sa uh, modules. Yes, sir, for, or... each, uh, for each uh, qualification, sir, we also have yeah. employment rate. Likewise, uh, it is disaggregated by age group. Yeah, please share na lang with us. Uh, uh, if you have also the geographical breakdown, it would be very helpful. Kung meron na. Uh, uh, yes, regional. At yung per, per yeah. industry, per uh, company. Kung, uh, we'll appreciate uh, as much data as you can share with us regarding those two items, yung tracer study at saka yung intel report because we're trying to come to grips with the whole uh, employment situation and where we can improve or make improvements now. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. We will include that in uh, our submission. Po. Salamat po. Salamat. Can we now go to Pasuk President, uh, who was with us a while ago. President Tirso, uh, ulit. Sir, andyan pa ko kayo? Offline na si. Ano, can we just ask him regarding employment data in case the SOOCs have uh, and their alumni associations keep track of uh, placements, no? 
Comsec, please paki-communicate na lang sa kanya yung query natin. We have NEDA also, National Economic Development Authority, Ms. Yuko Lizette Domingo. After NEDA, PIDS and Center for Youth Advocacy Networking and uh, we can wrap up. So NEDA, Ms. Yuko Lizette Domingo, are you online, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon. Hi, hello. Thank you for bearing with us. Please go ahead. Um, based on the uh, estimates that our national planning staff prepared, um, there have been improvements in the youth underemployment and unemployment, but it still remains high. So um, we will provide the three-year data for youth unemployment and underemployment together with our comments in the previous bill once it is cleared by uh, the Office of the Secretary. Hey, if you can have can go back even further, it would be nice, no? Just to see. Uh, and and if you could break down the data per per industry, sana kung meron kung meron lang kayo. Ha? Okay, Thank sir. You. Noted po. Salamat po. PIDS, Miss Audrey Tabuga, are you here? Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, if you can yes, share po. anything with us. So for this inquiry po about youth unemployment, based on our studies at Beads, Mr. Chair, we would like to provide inputs on on a rather broad. Uh, broad concept, which is the NEET. I think this was mentioned a while ago um, because this is the, the topic that we have at PEATS. So the youth NEET is the, are these, uh, are those youth that are not in employment, education, or training. So these are young people aged 15 to 24 who are not accumulating human capital um, through education or employment uh, as they transition to adulthood. So being an EET can undermine young people's uh, future employment and earnings prospects, uh, leading to lasting economic uh, disadvantage. So this, this neat concept um, offers a more holistic picture of youth underutilization compared to, for instance, the traditional indicators of youth ex exclusion, such as the youth unemployment rate, um, because the youth um, unemployment rate is um, based on the study of, of Dr. Uh, Orbeta, uh, which is who is our president PIDS. It's quite not relevant for youth ages 15 to 19. And there is also a youth exclusion, I think, concept, which is the out of school uh, youth, which is relevant, not re less relevant naman for, for youth ages 20 to 24. So we will share you the highlights of these studies, um, Mr. Chair, uh, including what we think are the gaps in the literature uh, that would require more in-depth studies. Because right now, most of the in-depth studies that we have on these are mostly pre-pandemic pa. And usually um, what uh, we are using our national surveys that are not designed uh, for this inquiry. So we will we will send, um, but we have some data of NEET from from PSA, um, and it's downward. It's going downward, but it's still 11.9 percent um, as of April 2022. So we will we will send you, uh, Mr. Chair, including all the cross tabulations that that we did that came from a PIDS study. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This was pre-pandemic. Uh, yes, um, the 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 data po from PSA, including na po in 2022, but for the more in-depth study po, 2019 pa po yung ginagamit na, na data yeah. because to, to do this, we need to um, merge it with like APs, the Annual Poverty Indicator Survey, the available um, poverty, more more um, detailed sur national surveys po. Yeah. It's not just the LFS. Po. Thank, Thank you. you. Salamat. We look forward to receiving that data. Po. Um, also, if you have anything, th th there's an ILO report regarding global employment trends for youth. And they mentioned this phenomenon called scarring for young people who lost their jobs or don't get a job during the pandemic or even after they graduate. And the finding ng report is those aged between 15 and 24 years experienced a much higher percentage loss in employment than adults. And in addition to this, young people who lose their job or fail to obtain one are particularly vulnerable to scarring, this phenomenon where their future labor market outcomes are worse than those of their peers even when macroeconomic conditions improve. Thus, they may end up accepting a job for which they are overqualified, which risks trapping them in an employment trajectory that involves informality and low pay. I'm just... Uh, yeah, and, and probably in our case, it probably leads to also to migration, no? Because... Uh, they will look for greener pastures overseas. So if, if, if there's anything on that, I, I, it's the first time I've encountered that. No, So it's interesting. Uh, usually it's about the difficulty of getting a job. But ito, this, is, this deals with the job skills mismatch. It also touches on the 
uh, yun nga, yung scarring phenomenon, it's something new for me, no? So can we look into that if there's anything, maybe PIDS can look if there's any institutional uh, help for the people who are vulnerable to scarring. Like, is there any office in the government, in Dole, in TESDA, that could do, parang, it's like when someone leaves a job in, <laughs> for lack of a better example, no? in the NBA, in, in basketball. Bago umalis ng team yun, ini-interview yun eh. Oh, what are your inputs on this organization? So baka may ganun tayo. Maybe when someone loses a job, they can be asked, oh, why would, why do you think you were relieved from your job? Or um, what happened to your uh, corporation? Maybe it was it a consequence? Or maybe there's data which tells us was the loss of employment a result of uh, redundancy, or, uh, macroeconomic level, or or was it because... Um, uh, qualifications or skills, new skills were needed, etc. Because I think if we can analyze that, then we can provide solutions, um, better solutions. No, yun lang. If there's anything lang in the data that that would help us, please. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Buga. We'll, thank we'll, you, Mr. Chair. Salamat. So, Center for Youth Advocacy and Networking, Ms. Zara's May Navarro, are you online? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Okay. In behalf of the Center for Youth Advocacy and Networking, we support the Committee on Youth and Pushing Agenda and policies that will increase youth labor force participation in the country. The majority of youth aged 15 to 24 years years old are still out of the labor market, but youth are four times more likely to be unemployed than the adults. And young women has a higher unemployment rates compared to young uh, men from 8.2% to 5.2%. Um, agriculture activities are one of the primary sources of livelihood in the Philippines. We believe that aside from creating jobs and employment in the urban areas, we should also create opportunities that will allow our youth to engage in agriculture and other green jobs, such as sustainable tourism organic farming, and ag agroforestry. Mo most importantly, through the passage of the Magna Carta of Young Farmers, we will make agriculture sector policy more responsive, responsive to young farmers' needs and therefore increase youth labor for participation in agriculture. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Salamat, Zara May. Oh, that's, those are all the guests. Did I, did I miss anyone? PSA, sorry? A PSA, I'm sorry. Assistant National Statistician Wilma Gillian. Ma'am? You're still online. Yeah. Are there? Yeah. Good ah. afternoon, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. Honorable uh, Angara. Okay, so we have already set the statistical table and the PowerPoint presentation on what I'm going to share uh, in this uh, forum. So if I may jump into slide seven, which uh, deals on the labor market statistics, concepts, and estimation methodology. Um, we can summarize actually the concepts we are using in the labor force survey on this uh, one slide, wherein we have the total population of uh, 15 years old and over. And uh, this can be dichotomized into the labor force. And the on the other hand, we have those not in the labor force. For those in the labor force, we have the category of those who are employed and uh, the unemployed. And among the employed, we can uh, we can have the number of underemployed uh, persons. So for those not in the labor force, this would include housewives, students, disabled persons, and retired persons. And for the unemployed, this would be the population 15 years old who have uh, without who have without work. I mean, who don't have work, and they are currently available for work and they are seeking for work or not seeking work due to valid reasons. So, Mr. Chair, I will give you the survey uh, results of the labor force survey. And uh, we can see that based on the June uh, labor force survey, the agriculture sector uh, contributes about 24.5% of the total labor force in the Philippines. And uh, this is the, the industry sector uh, accounts for 19% of the total labor force. And the services sector accounts for 56.5% of the total labor. Uh, Sorry, ma'am, could, could you repeat the distribution, okay. please? So of the total uh, employed persons as of June 2022, 11.4 million or 24.5% is in the agriculture sector. 
8.86 million or 19% uh, were in the industry sector and the biggest share 26.34 million or uh, 56.5% were in the services sector that was for the month of 2022. And if I may proceed, Mr. Chair, I can give sorry, you a long Sorry, ma'am. Sorry to interrupt. Pasensya na po, yes, ma'am yes, uh, Wilma. Okay. I just have a question on uh, yung construction. Saan po yun papasok? Sa industry, sa services? Ang construction sector po natin nasa services sector po. Okay, okay. okay. So this slide uh, will give us the historical uh, labor force participation rate of uh, 15 years old and over, which is... Uh, uh, illustrated here by the blue line, the 15 to 24 years old, which is illustrated here by the green line, and the 15 to 30 years old, which is illustrated here by the orange line. So, Mr. Chair, uh, in using the International Labor Organization uh, definition of youth, we have statistics on 15 to 24 years old. However, we also know that in the Philippines, according to the law, uh, we have youth defined as those 15 to 30 years old. We can generate both uh, data for this age. Just to group. clarify, ma'am, just to clarify yung blue line, when you say 15 years and older, ano yon? Ano yung upper limit nun? Uh, 15 and older, hanggang, 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 ano na, yung older. Hanggang na, sandahan po yun? <laughs> hanggang 100 po yun? Hanggang 100 pwede po yun. Ah, okay. All right. Labor okay. force participation rate. Okay. Thank you po. Uh, now, in terms of the employment rate from 2010 to 2021, um, we can see here for the orange line, which represents the 15 to 30 years old, similarly for the green line and for the blue line, we can see that during the pandemic, we, uh, we actually felt the impact of the pandemic because employment rate went down for all the both uh, youth uh, age groups and also for the 15 years old and over. And in terms of underemployment rate, uh, we can see a similar pattern wherein during the, the pandemic, no, uh, although medyo umangat ito ang, ang, ang underemployment natin, but in 2019, we had uh, better quality because underemployment uh, is a measure of uh, better quality of employment. And we have very low underemployment rate among the 15 to 24 years old, which was 12.1%. Among the 15 to 30 years old, it was 12.6%. And uh, among the 15 years old and over, the underemployment rate uh, was 14%. So in 2021 and even in 2020, the underemployment were a little uh, were higher than the 2019 uh, employ underemployment rates. So moving on to the um, an unemployment rate from 2010 to 2021, Again, we can see here, obviously, that during the pandemic, we have high uh, unemployment rate uh, for 15 to 24 years old, which is the orange line. It was 21.5% unemployment rate uh, for 15 to 30 years old, represented by the green line, unemployment rate was 17%. And for 15 years old and over, unemployment rate was 10.4%. But for 2021, we can see here that unemployment rate for all these three um, categories are actually uh, going back to the uh, pre-pandemic uh, levels. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this one shows us the top five major industries of the employed youth 15 to 24 years old in 2021. So 25% uh, or about uh, 1,570,000 were employed in the wholesale and retail trade repair of motor vehicles and motorcycles. This was followed as the second uh, top, uh, um, the most number of employed youth, 15 to 24 years old by those in the agriculture and forestry, which accounted for 21.5% or 1.35 million. And in the construction, uh, it came third with 10.7%. Manufacturing came fourth at 8.9%. And uh, for other service activities, which include health and wellness, 
uh, laundry activities and domestic services, it accounted for 5.3%. So for these uh, five major industries, uh, youth um, employment already accounted for 71.5%. So among the 15 to 30 years old, which is our Philippine definition of youth, uh, we have the same top um, major industry, uh, which is the wholesale and retail uh, repair of motor vehicles, motorcycles, followed by the agriculture sector. Also came third was construction and came fourth was also manufacturing and uh, um, the fifth um, for the 15 to 30 years old uh, is different from the 15 to 24 because this one is on administrative and support service activities. So these five industries alone accounted for 66.5% of the total employment of youth 15 to 30 years old. Ano po yung administrative um, and support services, ma'am? Ano po yun? What does that comprise? Kasama po dito, uh, Senator, mga tourism, mga tourist buses that are being hired uh, okay, and okay. mga clerk po na rin. Okay. Would, would you characterize these five in the top five industries which you said uh, comprise 66% of youth employment? 66. Are they high-paying jobs? Would you say they are high-paying jobs? Because from the looks of it, hindi uh, siya high-paying jobs. Not necessarily. They, yes, yes. Ko nga, and my my instinctive response is hindi siya high paying jobs kasi repair of yes. motor vehicles agriculture mm -hmm. na discuss na natin mababa ang kita construction yes. eh, alam naman natin karamihan ng trabaho dyan is day to day eh, di ba? Uh, manufacturing yes, so, <laughs> so factory yan administrative and support services so I think uh, ang one of the challenges for us is how do we enable higher paying jobs, di ba? I think that's the clear challenge. Into 30 years old. Oh, oh. Um, Any percentage, for instance, uh, ma'am, nung BPO, ITBPO, that's considered a high paying job, di ba? Meron ba tayo yes. dyan? Yes. Uh, Ilan percent yung po? We have one lang? survey. Uh, we, ca we have one survey, Mr. Chair, but we don't have the data here. We, we call it the Occupational Wages Survey and we can send uh, your office po a copy of that uh, Uh, but do you have data survey. as to ITBPO? How many are working in the ITBPO yes, sector? Yes, po. Meron po tayo uh, for the different uh, occupation senator. We have it as... in the occupational wages survey. Okay, um, okay. Sige, okay. padalan nyo na lang po. Opo. Sige po. Now, in terms of the underemployment among the youth, uh, we can see here for the 15 to 24 years old that the highest underemployment rate was registered in the agriculture and forestry sector which uh, was 29.8%. And this was followed by uh, the those who were in the wholesale, retail, repair of motor vehicles and motorcycles, uh, practically the same as what we had kanina dun sa top five major industries. And these uh, five industries alone uh, accounted for 74.4% of the total underemployed youth in 2021. And for the 15 to 30 years old, uh, for the top four, it's practically the same, but coming fifth for the 30, 15 to 30 years old is transportation and storage. And all five major industries accounted for 71.9% of the total underemployed youth of 15 to 30 years old. Now, let's just look at the regional distribution of uh, the 15 to 30 years old who were in the labor force uh, in 2021. Um, uh, we can see here that uh, the highest percentage of labor force, youth labor force, 15 to 30 years old, were in Region 4A, and this was at 15.9%, and then in the National Capital Region at 12.3%, and coming third is Region 3 uh, at 10.5%. So we would notice that are actually the growth regions in the Philippines. NCR, Region 3, and Region 4, they accounted for the highest percentage of labor force uh, across the country. And if we look also at the distribution of the employed youth 15 to 30 years old, um, the same regions uh, posted the highest percentages. We have uh, here as the highest, 15.2% from Region 4A, and followed also by uh, NCR, and came third was 10.5% uh, in Region 3. So the, the, the lowest in terms of employed uh, youth 15 to 30 years old in 20, 
21 was in car at 1.7%. Uh, looking at the regional distribution also of the unemployed youth, 15 to 30 years old by region, again, it would follow the same pattern where in region 4A, uh, at the highest percentage of 20.8% of the unemployed youth in 2021, and this was followed by a 14.5% unemployed youth, 15 to 30 years old, uh, in the ca national capital region. And came third again is Region 3 with 10% of uh, unemployed youth, 15 to 30 years old. So moving on to the distribution uh, by region of underemployed youth, 15 to 30 years old, uh, the, the highest percentage was in Region 4A at 16.6%. And this was followed by um, Region 5 at 9.1%. And came third, coming third was Region 6 at 8.4%. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, just to, for us to understand what uh, underemployed means is that these are, uh, they, they, they are employed, they work, uh, they are uh, but then they are still looking for additional hours uh, or they are looking for a job that has more number of hours. So they categorize themselves as unemployed according to their um, own perceptions. So um, if I in connection, give, before you move on to out uh, of school, can I ask some questions on under the underemployed? Do we have data as to... San, san po silang, san marami yung underemployed? I think agriculture yung sabi nung isang slide niyo, no? They're mostly in agriculture, yes, the underemployed. Yes, Senator. After, yes, under, after agriculture, po. san po sila? We have wholesale and retail, repair of motor vehicles and motorcycles, followed by construction, came forth was manufacturing, and the fifth uh, was on transportation and storage, Mr. Chair. So there's almost a... Nag-iba lang yung order nung top five. Pero halos rin din yung top five mo sa unemployed, eh, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, yung top five yes, job producers po. mo are low-paying low, low, low paying jobs kasi naghahanap pa sila ng trabaho after that. So, that's, pa, that's, that's something we really have to... Then, it, it's clear to me now, after hearing your data, is the quality of jobs that we yes. produce is what we should be looking after, no? Among the youth, yes. The quality are. of jobs, so... So we should be asking ourselves, all the agencies should be asking themselves, what can we do to help enable the private sector to produce more high-paying jobs? Tama ho ba? Yeah, tama, uh, Mr. Senator. <laughs> okay. Sige po, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just, okay, I just wanted to so, flag that because uh, minsan uh, we just trend, tend to push uh, job creation, but it's more of the same. Eh, di ba? Kung more yeah. of the same yan, problema pa rin yan, di ba? Kung more yes, of the same. You're producing enough jobs, pero have, these are not higher paying jobs. They're not higher quality jobs. The problema pa rin yun, di ba? Kasi, ibig sabihin, okay. hindi pa rin yun napapakain yung kanyang pamilya yes, o hindi pa, hindi pa sapat yun sa kanyang pangangailangan, di ba? Agree, Senator. Okay. okay, sige po. So, thank you po. For the out-of-school youth, this uh, data comes from the Annual Poverty Indicator Survey. And for the 2019 of the family members 6 to 24 years old, uh, so this would include children and youth up to 24 years old. We have a total of 39.8 million and 8.2% were out of school youth in 2019. And uh, nag-increase po yung family members natin 6 to 24 years old, 30, about 40 million. And the proportion of out of school youth also increased to 10.3%. So this time, Senator, since uh, we mentioned earlier of uh, Fisher Fox, no, let's just look at the 2018 poverty statistics among basic sectors, particularly on uh, fishermen, uh, uh, farmers, also youth and uh, children. So we have the 2021 uh, income poverty statistics already, but still we are working on the 2021 poverty statistics among basic sectors. So. This slide would show us that uh, the farmers had the highest poverty incidence among the basic sectors from in 2015 and 2018. Uh, for 2015, it was 40.8 percent, but we saw here an improvement. We can see here an improvement. I'm low man up to it. Well, I know who's back on. Well, I'm going to back on 2018. You know, I'm not going to do my pool. You may have some pandemic. 
Correct. So, so we're maybe going to we can, uh, if you could furnish us later data, it would be better kasi, di ba? I mean, irrespective of what happened in 2018, medyo, maybe it's nice for causation and for uh, other reasons, uh, his, historical accuracy. But in terms of addressing current problems, medyo baka nagbago na yung yung sitwasyon. Correct. Eh, Tama, Mr. Senator. So we will be releasing the poverty statistics among the basic sectors uh, before the year ends, this 2020. Can, can we have a special session with you on that once you have the data po? Okay, Would you present po, to us? Ah, sige. Yes, po. Yeah, you can, you can, you so can skip this now. Kasi we want to see the complete yes, picture. Eh. Is this your, ito na po yung last, last slide ninyo, ma'am? Ito na po yung last slide. So ah, thank, thank you. you so thank much, you very much. Mr. Chair. Salamat ng marami ho. We'll, we'll look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Salamat, Salamat po. po. So, any comments from the body? I think uh, it's past four. So, it's, uh, we've had a very fruitful session, uh, almost three and a half hours. So, yeah, any comments? Uh, if not, we'll suspend. I don't think we're done yet. I'd just like to ask the ComSec to, given the, what, the, what we've learned today, I think we need to involve the private sector more and some of the government agencies who are involved in job creation. So, can we get uh, PESA, FIRB, BOI, DTI, DOF, specifically regarding green jobs, the ITBPO Association, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Employers Confederation of the Philippines, ECOP, the Federation of Filipino Chinese Businessmen, the Makati Business Club, all of these uh, big uh, employment uh, or employers rather, big businesses, as well as could we get more information on the self-employed if we could ask Ma'am uh, Ma Wilma to, about the situation of the uh, self-employed. Wag na po ngayon kasi medyo pagod na tayo kaya uh, I think busog na tayo ngayon for now and we want to digest what you've given us there's a lot there. So we will yung DTI, yung small, data na lang. Opo, uh, opo, padala niyo na lang po regarding po. the self-employed and if you if you could include a bit of analysis uh uh with respect to the youth, no? Are there more youth entrepreneurs now given that we've passed a few laws which are supposed to make it more friendly or more attractive? Uh yun lang Thank po. You. So if Noted, there are no other comments uh, from the body, we'd, we'd like to suspend uh, for now yung ating hearing. So maraming salamat po uh, ng marami from our DepEd family, from our NYC uh, family for bearing with us and those online and our colleagues uh, who spent their valuable time here with us today. Salamat po ng marami. God bless. Ingat po.